In the large, sprawling, and expansive city of Internet, there is a district called Twitch. And on one street of Twitch, namely Robert Tha Lee Jem Street, there is a rowdy tavern called Zoom Zoom. In this rowdy tavern, it is that we meet our intrepid adventurers. We have Josh, known to the people of Twi in the Twitch district as the dreaded GM and recognised for his impressive locks and fondness for helping others. There is Michael, known to many people throughout Internet as the dead Aussie gamer, and with a reputation for patience and networking among his guild of bards. And then we have Stone, the son of Jamie, known throughout the land as a strong, charming, eloquent speaker and creative personality. And finally, we have the Phoenix in Satin, an intelligent, talented, skillful bard, known by the most powerful influences of the city to be a genuinely lovely person. And behind the bar of this tavern, a changeling, currently taking the form of the most devilishly handsome, charming, and humble man, me. Welcome, everybody. So, in this, uh, in this, in this tavern, the five of you have met, uh, not for the first time, no, you're actually a, a, a band that goes well, way back. Uh, you've been summoned here to discuss the ins and outs of a city that you've heard of out in the desert that may be worth playing at. A city called Silvata. It's in the heart of a desert. For the benefit of the other people who may be magically watching this innocuous meeting in this tavern, please could you describe your reputations, what they might be, and where people might know your characters from. For instance, I am Robert Hartley, and people may know me from being the dungeon master for the YouTube comedy series Viva La Dirt League. Josh, where, where might people know your character? Uh, you would know the Dreaded GM from the Twitch channel Dreaded GM, where he plays and tells tales uh, all through the week on th uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesdays, and on Thursdays. I'm very excited to uh, uh, to be here uh, with these fellow bards. Um, I look across the table uh, and I say, wow, your hair is, is inspiring. <laughs> I love your hair so much. And the, and the, and the barman says, well, thank you. I've, I've worked very hard on it. Uh, Michael, where might people know your character from? Ah, well, the dead Aussie gamer has not earned his name lightly, for he slumbers in his crypt on Twitch and YouTube, only awakening when roused by members of Discordia. Um, on occasion, however, he can be seen wandering from channel to channel, aimlessly looking for his soul. Um, he has been ar around the place, including, of course, Robert Hartley's channel and Dredd's channel, but also on How to Be a Great GM, the D&D official Twitch, World and War, tons and tons more. He's always the same wandering soul that people turn around and go, I know that guy from somewhere. Um, and uh, <laughs> and of course, now he, has wandered, <laughs> now he has wandered into this tavern uh, to which he says, uh, well, uh, I'm surprised that I am here, but I'm nonetheless uh, ha so happy to be here. My heart would stop were it to continue beating, uh, but it's not. So, so yay. Um, you're, a, you're a valued member of the, the band. Yes. Speaking of valued members of the band, Jameson Stone, where might people know your character from? Uh, people, people might know me across many realms. It could be from Vikel or the Shadelands or even Selvata itself. As CEO and creative director of Apotheosis Studios, my team and I have created many worlds for your all's enjoyment. It is a pleasure to be here with you today. And rounding off the last member of our five-person band, Satine Phoenix. Where might people know you from? Satine's only known through the ether, through scrying stones, <laughs> uh, known formally as a community manager of many dungeons and of dragons. Um, and also she is a teacher of sorts. She was the host of Game Master Tips, GM Tips, in a world called Geek and Sundry. And currently she travels the planets, uh, all the realms, she travels every single realm <laughs> that you can imagine to uh, reach out and teach other game masters and coach other <laughs> game masters on storytelling and players how to play. And you can often find her in uh, on the, the Twitch street of Satine Phoenix and um, here in the warm place that is Arian Salvato. 
Crew. We, 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 we are, can we be. We can in. teleport to Salvatus. <laughs> the, bit is, the bit is kind we of really, falling apart. She really, really wants to be honest. inside of Salvatus so much that most of the time when she wakes up, it's all she can think about. <laughs> she goes to sleep and all she can think about. But she um, grabs a drink off the table. My doesn't drink. care whose it is. <laughs> and <laughs> whips out uh, five sets of dice and tosses them on the table and says, would you like to play a game? I would love to, the barman says, coming along and put, placing down more drinks on the table and joining you, even if you didn't want him to. <laughs> as long as it doesn't involve rolling that. bones, I'm in. Five natural 20s, all at once. Wow. Now, what? Uh, now that I can, now that I can uh, somewhat say that I have GM'd for Satin Phoenix, uh, I, <laughs> one, of my life, one of my life goals has been ticked off, and I can, uh, unlocked. And I can, and I can, and I can drop the bit and say that we are here today. Uh, just to have a chat, really. Nothing, no, no, no ultimate agenda, right? There's nothing that we need pr to promote or uh, nothing big happening. Nothing, big. nothing massive, no, super, no, super influential. No huge, <laughs> absolutely exciting uh, Kickstarter that's happening. All right. So before we do get into sort of just the weeds of just chatting about bards and talking about things, and completely forget to talk about the things that you guys want to actually talk about, um, shall we? Shall we start by discussing uh, Sirens: Battle of the Bards and what that is and where people can find it? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, I partnered with my partners and husband and his uh, company, Apotheosis Studios, to bring to you guys a um, a D and D campaign and setting that encourages cooperative role play and and gives you advanced tools on mechanics on how to run games, how to think about games, and how to play in games. So this is a city called Salvata. It's an, an oasis. It itself is probably the largest magic item that I've ever heard of. Yeah. So I'm really super the, the proud of it. The city itself is, is a superstructure yeah. and, and a magic Oh yeah, item. talk about, you can talk about that. Yeah, yeah, so we, we designed, so a mathematics bard, um, an architecture bard actually created the city uh, to help invoke um, and, and, and bring down um, kind of basically blessings from, from the gods. Originally, it started as an oasis out in the middle of the desert, um, and a bunch of druids and bards uh, stumbled upon it and gave thanks, and the gods smiled upon them and blessed the waters with this magical essence called Kesava. Um, it was during the eclipse, and then a hundred years later, the eclipse happened again, and it was re-blessed, and so they created these discs of the city to commemorate each of these each of these blessings um, and the the city was built higher and higher and higher trying to basically draw down more of this magical essence this is now the the tenth time this has happened and the gods have said okay this is it no no more blessings from us and so calrath the grand chancellor has been planning for 300 years how to build this capping stone to create the city uh, to be able to have it kind of perpetually empower itself no longer be reliant upon the gods however this portal that opens up from the gods, um, you can draw in things from other planes, um, other other realms entirely. And so the Emerald Cabal, who is kind of a nemesis group of, of the Sirens, um, who uh, many fans have known for, for many years now, has also infiltrated the city. And they have very different plans for this grand invocation. And so Vlanya, who is Satine's character, um, has kind of sent out the call to adventurers and, and people to be able to go into Savata um, under the guise of being a band and being a performance act uh, to infiltrate the grand invocation uh, to either set things right or due to player agency, potentially do something entirely of their own choosing. No, in a nutshell. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot of things to cram into a very small nutshell. <laughs> um, just to touch on something you said, you said that the uh, this this capstone has been worked on for about three hundred years now, mm -hmm. and so plan, plan have, yep. has it been has it been known for a long time that the gods were ten ten and that's it, or is it uh, is oh, every oh, is every time that there is one it could be the last one. So um, on on the the third attempt, um, it was kind of. Gods are fickle creatures, <laughs> particularly D and D <laughs> gods. Um, yeah, particularly D and D gods. Um, on on the third attempt, actually, um, it, it was a failure, and so uh, it, it's it's technically been eleven 1 hundred years, not 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 uh, ten hundred years. Um, uh, so on this on this this third attempt um they failed and so that third disc actually is larger they built that disc out because they couldn't go any higher because oh, cool. they didn't have this magical essence um once that happened they realized that this wasn't just a, a simple process and around the seventh um maybe even the sixth um it was alluded to uh but but um 
Calrath is a divination wizard, and so he was able to kind of scry into the future and realize that this was not not all that it seemed to be. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, it devised this plan of saying, you know, if we don't have this Kesava, our, our entire city um, basically fails. I mean, they are out in the middle of a desert, mm -hmm. um, and they, they have water there, but it's really a very magically fueled city. Um, and a, a, a massive tourist attraction as well um, for bards and, and, and everyone else through a lot of planar travel yeah. through portals. Wonderful. Um, I was uh, I was wondering if it's uh, if it's the sort of thing that a uh, if there's like a, a definitive end to it that the gods have said absolutely no more, or whether the gods, yes. being fickle, could be persuaded by the end of the campaign if the, if you are strong enough or persuasive enough. I don't know if you're good enough at your performance. Maybe the gods say, "Well, we said it was no more, but you know, one more." Like in, in the I way that, it... as as actors, I'm sure you're familiar with the uh, just one more take. Situation. Encore, an encore, yeah. yeah. I think a, a discerning GM could definitely, uh, again, we provide tools for a GM mm -hmm. to, to run the campaign however they, 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 they'd like. We we have that it's been a pretty definitive, this is it from yeah. the gods. But again, if a, if a player for whatever reason or, or a series of players of party really is, is steering in that direction, um, who knows? I mean, uh, again, with, with our last book, um, the Red Opera, which is focused on warlocks, we really want, we really love, and, and we're doing this for Sirens as well, lean into player agency. Um, we provide a, a tool set for GMs to be able to set the stage, kind of set the table, and then you all, and you know, a recipe for the food, but then you all, you know, basically then get to dine how you all want to enjoy it. Yeah. Um, and we would never tell someone, this is this is how you have to play your yeah. game, because that's, that's just asinine. I mean, yeah, I mean, we have like different paths you can take for multiple endings, mm -hmm. but that does doesn't mean like if you fall in love with Salvata and you want to do this mm. again, you can l live in this city. You can actually have like years, many, many years of campaigning in the city yeah. and then just, you know, cycle it over. Yeah. And it just doesn't have that same, that same invocation. Basically uh, what, at least kind of canon wise, the gods didn't want the humans of Salvato to be reliant on them. They realize that if we don't continuously empower them, they're all going to die out here in the desert. And so we need to encourage them to actually be able to do this. So this capping stone that Calrath is building um, both acts as kind of a, a, a charging battery and an open portal to be able to have a, like extra planar communication. Uh, the Emerald Cabal, however, they want to, I mean, uh, this isn't really spoilers, yeah. but they want to bring in something. They don't want to bring a god in. They actually mm. want to bring in something what a little they more. What they are worshiping. Yeah, what they worship. We'll, we'll leave it at that. A little more fiendish. Um, and and then within the Emerald Cabal, there are a couple different factions that want to do different things. Some want to bind it. Others want to just kind of give themselves over to it. Um, and so there's a lot of different, we have a faction tracker in the campaign as well, where you can either pull well with the Emerald Cabal, you can pull well with Calrath, um, you could pull with the resistance. There's a resistance movement that just wants to topple the entire system. And even within the resistance, there's several different factions. And we really just want people to kind of play how they want to play. And we, Again, just give them different options of how do you want to run it. How, you know, do you do you like fiends? If you like fiends, if you're a warlock, maybe you think that's a great idea. You know, <laughs> um, or if you don't like fiends and you want to be a demon slayer, you can bring the demon in and kill it. You know, there's a bunch of different options you <laughs> can go with it. It's one of the things that I. It's one of the reasons that I never tend to use uh, modules. I always use homebrew campaign things because I find that a lot of the modules that I looked at when I was first getting into the game just felt a little restrictive, a little bit like yeah. railroad campaign. This is the thing, and sure, you can. You can decide what this particular NPC looks like, but uh, you still have to say these particular things and give them this information yep. when they roll this. Uh, yep. So the idea that the, the idea that you've put a lot of thought into allowing for player agency, having something yep. that is a module but has also just got player agency in, in embedded it within it, it's uh, it's quite inspiring that you've done so. I, I spend this the same the same issue for us too, and and so like for the Red Opera, we have massive different endings. I mean. This is this is the cover here. It's, it's a warlock based book, so here we it's have so a, 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 a warlock right on the front. So beautiful, it's so beautiful, man. Three hundred three hundred and twenty. You pages, can't so. see it, but it's got like cool hammer yeah, texture. Like yeah, like hammered. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> And so there, there are yeah. there are four major endings um, in in the book itself with variations within them, and they are radically different. But I mean, it's, really cover. It, yeah, but it's even like it's more. It's that is awesome. But it's like, how did you get to even yep. those endings? So mm -hmm. um, we have we've got the book separated into five different books, and one of those books is a game master book. This 
in here and it's not like a bunch of different books it's all like sections right yeah this is like how do you plan and prepare your game so that you can have a, a campaign that's 10 main story uh, 10 yeah. main stories on a timeline and also have the world feel so open and like you can do almost anything yeah. but also have the world exist and be running um on super speed, right? So this is like gaming at a very high level. Right. You come in at tier two and you're only going up, a, you know, five levels mm. because the entire game takes place over a 10 day. So here's 10 adventures, 10 days ish. Yeah, you know? and then 10, 10, 10. And then there's quests. side quests yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. And we've actually like come up with mechanics and items that'll help you, you know, get your long rest and be able to like, replenish resources which is one of the things that i love to take away from players so uh, <laughs> to be able to do all of that and get to those multiple endings get the emerald cabal to be completely different and depending and all the different factions responding to your players mm. it's a lot it sounds like a lot but we've given the dungeon masters the ability skills and resources to pre-plan so when they're ready to run the game it's like a piece yep. of cake they right. totally understand how to do and this. they know your players choose they, they then they get to have this wide open sandbox and they can build whatever they like yeah and if they go a different way you're like okay this still happens right yeah and then it's, <laughs> that's you, you have the information prepared for you a lot of my what audience happens? a lot of my audience has a similar sort of uh, understanding of how i run my games is that I, I i always say you can do whatever you want i run sandboxes i have a thousand different things happening at once and you can only really choose to follow one of them this will still right. happen over here so that if yeah, you don't exactly. if you chose to, to not follow the clues that i'm giving you about this necromancer over here and instead you go shopping for a week then that's fine, but this necromancer doesn't stop. He's the still doing stuff. He's yeah, still exactly. doing stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But here's I, the I, thing. It's like you got to lead up the players to not have to go shopping all the time, mm, right? Yeah. You have to be like, okay, here's a series of events that are going to happen that are going to lead to this grand invocation. Yeah. Now, are you a part of it or are you not a part of it? And here's the things that the, per the request giver is saying, we need you to do these things. Otherwise, the other people are going to... Um, do the things that they need to do. Yeah. So are you going to be a part of it or not? Another thing that I hate about most modules, I'm I'm very homebrew, um, but I have been editing my the way I run modules be, um, so that I can be happy as a game master. Um, I truncate a lot of things and I get rid of the first three chapters. Yeah, I just right. throw tutorial those out levels. the window. Oh, yeah. The tutorial level. Yeah. So in, in our <laughs> tutorial level, it, we have the tutorial level for you guys as a free sample on the bardbook.com. Yeah. And uh, it it's like it gets you right in the action. You understand what's going on. You get to explore the world. You start understanding where the dangers are, um, who's against who, and how the world works mm -hmm. right in that that chapter where and your everything you choose to do has uh, has gravity right yeah. so um hopefully if you guys have read it then you get to see a little bit how things start moving around and the way the factions work no sorry to, i think Ma michael i think you oh. said had something well to i was say. gonna say i um I, I love the idea of like 10 quests in 10 days all i can imagine right right now is um is a gm rocking up in like a lamborghini cowboy hat on big thick glasses going i hope you boys like short rests <laughs> yeah. Hundred percent. I just amazing. want to. Uh, I just want to pop over to the art here to show off a little bit of. Uh, yeah, the art's the amazing. Here. So uh, I've, oh, got here, I've got here. I've got here just a, a small selection of the amazing art. But if I uh, if I show off this this city here, you can see uh, the full uh, the full scope of this incredible artwork. Can you tell mm. me a little bit about Thank um, you. who actually who is responsible for a lot Absolutely. of this? Absolutely. So 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 David, David Granjo uh, is our art director and our lead artist. Uh, we have a, a whole our, a team of both artists and writers. Um, I've been working with David for gosh probably about seven years now. Um, he and I started collaborating together on our first graphic novel, which is called The Last Amazon. Um, I love David dearly. He's such a fantastic artist. Um, and to see him now step up, uh, not just being an artist, but actually stepping into an art director role is really fantastic. Um, as Ken 
creative director and CEO, it, it's my job to, to really empower a lot of my other team members mm. um, to do great work. And, and now as we're growing, uh, to have him step into a leadership role is, is really fantastic. Um, and he's, he's doing an, an, an excellent job. Um, and I'm, I'm very excited for the where, where we're moving as a studio is fantastic. Yeah. Mm. Well, one of my favorite pieces is the one where the bard with the cello. I really oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. so much. Yeah, that yeah. was David. Yeah. David did that one. Yeah, it's <laughs> was really like, fantastic. Yes. That, that was and then the animation one. too. So oh, we have it yeah. animated where it then yes. actually explodes oh, wow. out. Yeah. 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 Unfortunately, the, we can't uh, do that in the book. I, you know, I yes. absolutely yes. loved the, the animation. <laughs> before, um, so, so if you check out the Kickstarter, there's actually the animation that's that's up there um, right now. So uh, if you haven't done so already, the bardbook.com is, is where you can see it. And if you can watch it, um, you know, watch it after or watch it during, you know, either or. <laughs> uh, but it is an absolutely breathtaking animation. And as someone who, like, my major is film and television, I've got to say, like, the actual cinematography on it was just so damn captivating. Oh, thank you um, so much. Yeah. I, I, was, I, thank you. I, I was breathless the whole time. It's, um, not, it's not blowing and, smoke either. Like, I, I, as I said before, I'm not one for you running, like, Camp it, other people's ideas. I'm too. I'm too like I, uh, selfish about my own creative. I'm like, oh, I've got a world that I want to create. I love world building, and uh, but watching the, uh, the the Kickstarter promo video, I was I was instantly like, I need to play in this city. Yeah. Just the different the different levels. I had so many different questions about how how are they governed? How many, how do people transport? Oh my god, them? I can't wait how to you tell you in? about the government. We've got, like, we've got a thousand things to talk about. Before we, oh, yeah, I yeah. want to get some sort of structure though, because one of the things I really want to talk about first is. Uh, is the number 10 important for yes. you two? Because there are 10 districts, there are 10 subclasses of bards, there are 10 quests and 10 side quests. Uh, each happen each, each uh, new level is added every 100 years, which of course is 10 squared. And as a mathematician, I actually have a, a degree in mathematics. I'm really <laughs> fascinated with numbers and I, no I noticed that pattern. Is, is, that a, is that an intentional what, pattern? What, what shape is missing from the platonic solids? The D10. Hey. There it is. So is I was that, gonna say, was, that a, was that a decision that you Yay. made? For a I, I, I was gonna say it had something to do with beholders because beholders have ten rays. Beholders. I feel like something's just gone clean over my head. Um, so, so because you, you are, you'll, you'll, you'll dig this. Oh, so, oh my gosh, um, one more. I, as an as a bard, I went to art school, 3D animation, 2D animation, stop motion animation, sculpture, and illustration. But I spent a really long time as a graphic designer. And the two of us, you can't see this, but the other room next to us is just sacred geometry. We love sacred geometry. We're really art. kind yeah. of obsessed. Yeah, particularly Metatron's cube. Yeah. Um, so is, is um, this is Metatron's cube, and with the D10 inside of it as well as a top down of, of the Salvata. City. So the yeah. actual, again, when we were talking about how, how Salvata itself is constructed as kind of a superstructure and as a magical item, um, it is based off of Metatron's cube and then also the Flower of, the life. Flower, flower of life as well. Uh, and so having them kind of conjoined um, and then we've added in the D10 just because we are, you know, dice birds. There was no yeah. way I wasn't gonna add <laughs> it's, it. It's technically not a platonic oh, solid. Um, no, but, but here good. you can see it yeah. here as well. Like yeah, and so um, for the, for the the non-math nerds uh, in the audience, I'll just quickly explain a very brief description of a platonic solid. So all of the other dice are the only platonic solids that there are, meaning that all of the different sides are exactly equal, and you, it doesn't matter which way up you look at them, the side is uh, exactly the same, unlike the D10, which has sort of a kite shape to its sides. Um, and every apex, every point around connecting the sides has the same number of sides attached to it, which is not the same for the D10. Ah. So theoretically, the D10, the D10's shape could be you could change the five around the, the five sides to one of the uh, arrangements into any number you want, and you could create a, a D24 in the same arrangement. It's just arbitrary that we use it as a as a ten. So you'll probably do a better job. Will you, will, you, will you explain Metatron's cube too? Because I think you'll probably do better <laughs> than I. Do. So, so, so I was so concise. I, I no, no, I, 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 I genuinely believe you would do a better job because uh, okay. uh, sacred geometry is a, is sort of a different field of mathematics to uh, to sort of topological geometry. So, so as, from my understanding, Metatron's cube is an uh, an image that ha that contains all of the different platonic solids within it. So it has the tetrahedron, which is the D4. It's got the uh, quadrahedron or the cube. It's got uh, the dodecahedron, the icosahedron, oh, go grab one. Uh, and the octahedron. Uh, all of, so the D4, the D6, the D8, the D12, and the D20 in it. And then you have yeah. absolutely. created it to have the D10 in it as well, which is fascinating. Just, 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 just for fun. But yeah, and so within Metatron's cube, again, for people who like are kind of 
sheep nerds or you know math nerds like us um and we have a subclass for these people actually so i think i think you'll like it rob um, <laughs> everything within our material universe with these shapes can be housed within metatron's cube and and metatron's cube is seen almost as kind of like the mouthpiece of the gods it is how a a like transcendent entity would communicate with a three-dimensional creatures like us yeah. um and so when you when you bring all of it together it's like nothing that could be cannot be encapsulated within metatron's cube within from a, from, is, a, from, a, from a shape a, a shape perspective <laughs> so that's, that's, that's 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 metatron's cube and so this, the city <laughs> leans into that um of again trying to open an interdimensional transdimensional portal into the gods to actually bring bring the energy of a deity in but again you can tune that dial to fiendish planes too which mm. is what what um you know the kind of our, our nemesis of the story um the emerald cabal are go. trying to do so uh yes. when you look at it it's it, this is probably the most beautiful shape aside from just the way fractals work for me as an artist so uh let's see hopefully yeah, people can see it yeah 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 so and within then, that you can trace certain yeah. lines out and if you were to highlight those lines you'd see the shape of a cube if you highlight different lines you see the shape of a tetrahedron and so on yeah, it's this yeah. optical illusion is yeah. super it, great. It, it, if, yeah, it, you, you can like, it, and really quick, Michael, I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> you, you can actually, you know, like, like you do like a magic eye, you can see the shapes actually pop out yes. of that. Yeah. Yeah. And there are some YouTube channels that do a good job of actually showing showing it in three dimensions. Oh, that's so and, cool. And if you were to take any mind altering substances, they really come out at you. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Michael, sorry yeah. to interrupt. Oh, I, I was gonna say, can I, can I ask, please, someone in, in Rob's audience, um, um, can you clip and put together a series of just how joyful Rob looks talking about math <laughs> about this? Because I swear, I thought you know, like I mean, maybe it's maybe it's just just me and my 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 layman's understanding of mathematics. But like you know, it's like Salvata, bards, music, magic, captivation, and Robert's here grinning from ear to ear. Wait, there's maths, maths. <laughs> which, yes. which is why, which is why leading us perfectly onto the College of Geometry. Which is why I love that you have acknowledged that there are other ways it's to art. be artistic. It's art. There are yeah. so many other ways to be artistic. I don't meet many people. Well, I meet quite a lot of people who hear that I've got a, a degree in acting and a degree in mathematics and think that's a weird. That those don't go together. Not and weird I have to at tell all. them it is not that uncommon. There are lots of creative creative people in the academic yeah. worlds. I've met so many physicians and physicists, sorry, um, that, that while I was at, at university studying physics and maths, who are very creative uh, and and performance doesn't have to be standing on stage or singing. It can be uh, some of some of the most charismatic people I've seen are the university professors who are talking about the, uh, the cosmology and talking about the structure of the atom or talking about how how the the solar system is formed and things and while you're while you're watching them you're captivated for the hour and then you and then the bell rings or whatever and you go I didn't take any notes oh, oh god I didn't take <laughs> so was, they were just so excited and then you walk up to them after the the lecture and they're all like oh uh, oh I'm, I'm not quite as because yeah. it, because performance doesn't have to be from your 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 personality your 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 ability to talk to people it can be and which is why i love that you've your some of your subclasses in this book have got like intelligence based bards and dexterity based bards and yes. uh, you're acknowledging this art artistry uh, and you did talk about the college of geometry is there any more you can tell me about that yeah so first we, we wanted to step back and we're like what is a bard bard is an artist um, a bard is a writer, it's an actor, it's a craftsman. It is um, even simplify that even more. And a bard is a master communicator who evokes emotions, yeah. right? So here's uh, someone who communicates in their own form so well that it will attract or repel. So yeah. that is it like- communicates an idea An too. idea, mm. exactly. So you break it all down, that's what you get. And then you can, you have like your, um, then you have the the people who are doing this out in front of you and they're like you know wily and they're just like performing and then there's the quiet artists the, the artists who are behind the scenes you know so if you watch a movie how long does it take for you to get through the credits like an hour <laughs> like 30 minutes an hour to just watching all the credits all those people are bars the fabricators the set designers the clothing designers the hairdressers um you know having gone to school and having taught art and done graphic novels and writing and he's a writer and a graphic novelist and and 
doing all these things. There's so many things that you do that are quiet. So we're like, okay, now you've got your bards, which is anyone that can communicate and evoke emotions. Um, and now you also have your introverts and your extroverts. Now we can talk about designing bards with a yeah. really full understanding of this. Yeah. So we've got the uh, College of Geometry, which is your architect, bard, your jewelry designer, people who can see math and use math in and, and form and function. And the, in beauty, the, the, beauty, the beauty of math too. The and re really leaning it. leaning within um, both um, platonic solids and also, you know, fractal design too. Yeah. Yeah. But this with an understanding of how like the universe works on a mathematical level and the art history of it. Yeah. yeah. There's, and then there's, doing there's cool combat little... stuff. <laughs> yeah. And well, it's the combat stuff that got me excited about playing a, a geometry bard is that like the idea of the surprising things that come out of math. Sometimes you'll you'll be doing something that doesn't have anything to do with circles. And yet once you get the answer, you'll be like, oh, that seems like a weird answer. And you do some maths on it and you realize there's, that's because there's pi in there. And there's, yep. there's the, and you're like, why did pi come out of this thing? And if you look at it, it's all kind of connected. And like maths is kind of the fundamentals of their entire universe. So the idea that you're using the maths to create spells and things is a fantastic yeah. idea. I love it. And it just seems so natural, right? And then we also have the, um, so that is going to be your intelligence base bar, just like yeah. so that we're all clear. Um, <laughs> then you also have your like college of anatomy, and the anatomy is someone who is a master at their. At, form right mm. whether it's a bodybuilder or a dancer or a martial, martial artist, artist this yeah. is your deck space bard and this is someone who doesn't need verbal components to cast their spells and that's really important because um you know the way the D, D is set up it's so generalized we're now we're taking it more special mm. looking at at this and with all the other classes we're trying to think of you know there's a lot of gimmicks that you see on um dm's guild right mm -hmm. you're like here's my tattoo bard here's mm -hmm. my this and that and we love the tattoo bar that's actually <laughs> one of our favorites but the tattoo bard is not a subclass mm -hmm. so we're looking at like subclasses and then all the jobs that you can do so we have the university of salvata and um you can take a master's degree get your master's yeah. degree in this like specialty um and then there's many things that you can do as a bard from that mm -hmm. So did you feel the need to um, sort of get a comprehensive across all of the stats? Have you got a strength-based bard in there? Have you got a constitution-based bard? And... Yeah, I don't. I don't know if we have a. Con a con I don't think we have a constitution. Con, con, con yeah. always gets the the shot under the stick because it's right. kind of like right. the stat that everybody wants. <laughs> yeah. All right. And, but there's I, I no like pitch, I want to pitch the um. I want to pitch the con bard. Okay. So, all right. All yeah, right. Let's yeah. Do let's do it. it. Yeah. So so uh, Here, uh, sign, sign this. Sign, sign this. Yes. Sign <laughs> this. Sign <laughs> this. Sign this. Official official release. This is public domain now. Okay. So so here's my idea. Here's my idea. Right. Okay. You know how you go to a carnival, right? And there's. I was just thinking the same. I think we're on the same way. There's this guy, right, who just specializes in eating hot dogs. Yes! Right? As, yeah. many, yes. as many <laughs> hot dogs as, as humanly possible, right? <laughs> Which impresses <laughs> wide crowds. We'll win trophies. Um, and, and those, uh, and and those yeah, that well, do like hot sauce, hot sauce challenges. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Oh, oh yeah, the hot sauce. Yep, 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 yeah, that's it. That's the con bar. <laughs> their, yeah. their component pouch is just a bunch of different chilies. <laughs> <laughs> you actually ate a bag of holding. That's how it goes. <laughs> <That's how it laughs> <goes. laughs> <laughs> you have to taste all of it. They yeah. misunderstood yeah. what a bag of devouring was, and they're like, sweet. <laughs> but you know what? Those are actually really cool because they can then adapt to other situations. Like, you could be a sword swallower as well, right? <laughs> yeah. like, you know, if, you, if your gut was like a, a, a bag of holding, you'd be, ah, there we go. All right, uh, exclusive. There's oh, actually going to be 12 subclasses of bad. So. <laughs> Get it, guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, so, yeah, that actually, so that is the constitution is the one of them that we're just like, how do we? Ah, it's, yeah. It, um, uh, it says it's um, a constitution check is to model your attempt to push beyond the normal limits. You could do that inspiration so of like just endurance. being like, I'm just going, we're going. <laughs> Follow well, me, we're like, going. That's your cross country. But, but, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I can imagine, yeah. I can imagine, yeah. a, I can imagine like a combat uh, removing people's exhaustion instead of instead of giving them inspiration, you're removing exhaustion. Yeah. So you're like, we can push beyond our body's yeah. limits together. It's, and it's like, very that's, it's that, cool. it's that, uh, it, 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 it's that gym, it's that gym personal trainer who's like, you know, One two more, more two more, go. two more, come on, we can, <laughs> that inspires them that way. Yeah. yeah. Or, or so, like, so it's not about your constitution. Yeah, I suppose it's inspiring. Yeah, everyone. Yeah. 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 
Because I mean, you know, they, they used to be like the Scottish <laughs> bards as well, like the guys who played the bagpipes, and all they would do is they would keep playing, and if they, <laughs> as long as they were playing, the, the their army would keep fighting. Yeah, and as soon yeah. as that that guy stopped, he was either killed or it was like you know that was morale getting hit. He's running. So, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's just, yeah, exactly. He's just keeping that. <laughs> and you think when about the bagpipes like, getting really quiet. Oh. <laughs> it's like in the ah. distance. <laughs> I, I I have a question, Rob. Are you, are you going to be playing the ge the, the geometry bard? Oh, on, mate! On our game. <laughs> you know it. Because we're it. we're we're running this on Friday, so yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm super excited. Oh, oh this Friday! Oh, yeah. the, the, sub, the subclass isn't 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 out not, and ready yet. Oh no! no but, okay. yeah. we, 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 we have to make up our idea of it. Yeah. 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 You, you, you can yeah. make your own version. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll have to homebrew our own see how close it gets. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, when we do have it out, we'll make sure you get it first. Oh, absolutely! Hells yeah, absolutely. Hells. Well, yeah, you, on, please, on... please beta beta test it with us. Yeah, Actually, yeah, yeah. Play, 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 play test it with us. I would be over yeah. the moon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Please, 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 please. You've yeah. seen it here. This is yeah. how that happens. All right, happens. done. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so uh, moving on in a similar sort of vein, we had uh, so we talked about how all these different careers that we wouldn't normally see as artistic can still have art in, in them. When you go, when you, when you, when it comes to like trying to. Um, Trying to put a box around what art is, it can it can almost feel a little bit like, well, if everything's art, then nothing's art, kind of thing. And so, uh, would you say that there were some jobs within the city of Salvata that don't lend themselves to sort of bard or artisanship? Like, is there a sanitation worker bard or an office worker bard <laughs> kind of thing? Like, ah, uh, in our fantasy world, are you kidding me? We've, <laughs> we've got we've talked about this actually great length. We actually, it's like a thing it's on our executive team yeah. of like who's taking out the poop. Yeah. Uh, well, so, so I'll give I'll give you an example. So how how the disc structure is set up, we can even show show to get on the inside of the wormwood box. Um, these these discs, um, they don't. I'll make sure it doesn't glare too bad for you. Sorry. Um, so amazing. The, the, the discs are set up where oh my you, can't, you don't have is like, that like dirt under it. Yeah, there's you know? no dirt. Like so you can't you can't tunnel in. So there's no way to dispose of waste. Um, and so me, I'm like I'm such a world builder. I'm like guys, like how, how are we gonna get around this? And then, Rick and I both turn like, to him and we're like, bags of devouring. Take care of that. Yes, I'm just like, it's I like have the total same thing. Fantasy, I guess yeah, it's just so funny. <laughs> I, like, why have... wouldn't we? I have the exact yeah. same. I'm such I'm such a, a nerd for like the minutiae and the details that one yeah, time really that's early my in, my, in my DM yes, game, yeah. I had them uh, <laughs> find a, a, a hag's house, and I had to think like, where does she poop? Where does? She... Yep. And I was like, she's got she's got an outhouse built into a in, into her upper floor, and there's just like a yeah. long drop into a bag of devouring. And I was like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, no people, and this is fun because you you don't see restrooms in no. in your games and so i from the very beginning and plus like i was running for a group of all girls and of course we're going to go to the bathroom this is what we do in real life <laughs> this is what we're going to do in the game and so i've always tried to build restrooms and then now that we've been thinking about this it's like so what would this luxurious restroom with press the digitation it's always oh, yeah. nice you got your your Toilet of devouring. Actually, that sounds scary. But you know, <laughs> I'm picturing, I'm picturing a I mimic. Don't know, I don't know if I want to use that. <laughs> you don't need to do that. Yeah, right. Mimic teeth. <laughs> well, you know, you know the day is a little yeah. different on this one. In my, in my world, I actually do use a monster for my restrooms. I actually have otugs. Um, oh yes. Oh, yeah. So like big sewers have like giant otugs, and tiny restrooms have baby otugs, and there's like an actual. Oh. Otug. A drop in, adoption program where, awesome. like, you know, the sanitation yeah. community like relocates them and gives you a new baby or two uh, every so often, and then oh, yeah. that's so, so funny. Cute. In my world, I, I think I think they are the sweetest, kindest, and fluffiest of all monsters. <laughs> And I, I and I hate when parties get into the oh it's a monster that smells let's kill it I'm like no they're cute and they they help what people they and, nice. they're, they're like, like oh. I got one job <laughs> yeah exactly and they only smell world. nice when and they smell nice when they're in distress so I always make it really mean and savage when whenever they start attacking it's like you start smelling potpourri uh, <laughs> vanilla essence all this stuff happens and then they're like why does it smell so nice because you're hurting it and then they're like oh <laughs> yeah that's a good defense mechanism actually hmm. so um. I'm from Los Angeles and I spent a lot of time in San Francisco. I spent like 10 years in San Francisco, 15 years in LA. And those are, those are cities of bards. Mm. I live, I traveled to, I travel to London and Paris and these are all cities of bards. Mm. So if you can imagine 
everyone has a job and sometimes their job is an artistic job and sometimes it's not and they go home and do their artistic things um yeah. you know on the side uh in this this is a city things need to happen so mm -hmm. people are going to take odd jobs people are going to suffer for their art um they're going to do what they can we have an entire system where the nobles live at the top and then the everyday folks live at the bottom. The magic is kind of like hoarded up there and kind of trickled down yeah. to the lower levels. And the artists are going to, uh, some of them will sell out and do the things that the nobles and maybe even corrupt nobles are trying <clears throat> to get them to do. And so it's, it is, it is a fantastical city, this beautiful, amazing oasis city. And also it, it does mimic all the different districts from the major cities that we both, um, you know, traveled and lived in. Yep. Hell yeah. So those, those insurance salesmen may not be bads while they're at work, <laughs> but they will go home and be a beat slam poet or something. They'll, they'll yeah. Yeah, have exactly. other creative. Uh, sorry, Josh, you wanted to say something. We all were steamrolling oh, uh, over you. No, too that's nice fine. I was, we were up. talking about toilets, and I was just going to say in my world, I have a series of um, spas called Creatures of Comfort, and they use monsters to actually, you know, add those random, like, days like treatments and stuff like that. I was just adding. Oh my oh, god, yes, yeah. the girls Steam method. I like, talk about it. Yeah, to um, the point where a flump helps you with your yes. mind oh, and like nice. yeah. your mind massage. Like it's, wow. yeah, so I was just adding, I was gonna add that in, so. Uh, gelatinous <laughs> cube, yeah. uh, my girls, we've, we've uh, and while they're like killing it, you know, of course they're gonna take a little bit of it. And um, uh, one of the girls, my Lynn, tried to create a farm to make beauty products so that she would just oh, get like, yeah. chemical peels. <laughs> so it's all about ah! chemical peels. And then she was going to have this little house for it and grow them. Of course, that was going to like backfire. All backfire yeah. But that was her whole plan. She carried yeah. it for like a year in a yes. jar just so that she could have this. Oh, serum. I love it so much. <laughs> I love it so much. Hell um, yeah. So, so speaking about like roles and how they fit in with bards, the uh, I know you've talked about um, the the fact that you can play like a bard, a barbarian, and uh, and that sort of thing. You can multi-class into bard and, and and have that sort of artist find find the artistry within other classes as well as mm. bard. Can you tell tell me a little that, more about I, that? Yeah, that that that's what was, that, that I was just gonna say uh, to you about um, when you're asking about other people doing other jobs. One of the things, so a lot of people may not want to play a full-blooded bard that's totally okay yeah. we we want to give them the opportunity we did the this same thing um, with our last book the red opera which is a warlock book um, and we made it really easy for people to take a patron pact as a as a subclass um, and so they could see what it was like to have a patron and we gave you know very clear outlines for gms too who maybe weren't super used to you know, like role playing and 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 GMing as a patron, how how that made sense, and it people really really dug it. And so we're like, that's so cool. We gave people this option of how to try a new class. Just try it out with their previous characters. They put it in. So we're doing the exact same thing with sirens. Um, now some of the issues with. Um, having a you know performance based and a charisma based class, it doesn't necessarily coincide with whatever their primary yeah. attribute is. Yeah, so yeah. We, we really want people to be able to just feel what it's like from a role playing perspective of being an artist, being a performer. And again, it doesn't have to be just this extroverted performance, but you know, to be a support character if they want, or to be a very active character, um, you know, someone who does um, like origami and then creates an origami creature and then like blows that into existence. Yeah. And then that goes and fights on the battlefield or, or, or a fantastic artist that actually draws a creature or a monster and has, you know, roles, uh, you know, in, in, a, in a backpack and then they bring out which one they want to have. And it's like a oh. summoner or bar that awesome. they themselves have crafted um and those would be potentially more kind of like a full-blooded bard cast uh, class but you could have that be as like a sorcerer bard or a wizard bard that leans into trying out at your hand at being a your adventurer type and involving you know our artistry and creativity in that it, the, the just for, you know, fun role playing opportunities. Druid bards, paladin. Yeah. It's funny though that the paladin is what you would have for your charisma. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I haven't even thought a lot about what a, a paladin bard subclass would be. Well, that was so, like just divine smite. That was that was actually my next question. Like, which one, <clears throat> which which of the other existing classes do you think would would least lend itself to that bard crossover? <clears throat> You've talked about how the bard barbarian. It's easy to see them like go and rage on the drums. And the style. 
Yeah, but like <laughs> a druid bard, really, a ranger no, bard. No, I think like, they you're, all. You're really just limited by your creativity. We, you yeah. know, we we've been talking talking to people about um, a, a lot of the bard classes that they've done just for fun. You know, on, on interviews like this, and it's been so so fantastic to have people share different bards that they've made. And I am just blown away by people's creativity. And, and again, like as game designers, it's our job to just create that sandbox and, and create the tools so people can make their own bards. That's what we're really trying to lean in with with our subclasses. Be like, okay. Not not, it doesn't have to just be the specific type, but you can kind of craft these different things and then create it the way that you want to do it for your own role playing. Yeah, we've got, um, so in Sirens, uh, Zaris is a ranger bard and she's a monster hunter. And she's such a badass and she she's a musician. She's a, She has her own band. She sings with Jason Charles Miller and she carries her synth and so she she gets to show you how you can be a uh, a performing musical she's a really good job ranger. Yeah. yeah and she only has one level in bard but she <laughs> uses that all the, all the time. time yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and she al allows it to flavor her role playing and you know we were talking you guys were there we were talking about this earlier like do you play your game rules as written or yeah. do you have the ability to like come up and like blend things for how you want to role play. We've got um, Alicia Marie is our College of Anatomy bard. And so for a, a long time, she wasn't able to hear very well and couldn't speak very well. So, um, you know, it was very important. Like it was so obvious that she would be this College of Anatomy dancer aerialist. And when it, she's like, okay, I, I want to try something. What if we had, so I really want the immovable rod, but I want a hoop because I want something to dance in. And of course I'm going to say your immovable yeah. rod is now yeah. an immovable hoop. Yeah. Yeah. How, why is it awesome? Because you throw it on top and you're strong enough to raise yourself. Up, oh. And now you have advantage, yeah. right? So yeah, now it's tactical yeah. and it's really cool. Yeah. And because you're allowed to move and snake around it, you can cast your spells. Yep. That yeah. makes like, me so happy. <laughs> just isn't it imagery cool? in my head. <laughs> I just, right I want to see that performance. Oh man. Yeah. That's oh, you so do, cool. you can see it. It's on I'm gonna, I'm in gonna our go. yeah. the bardbook.com. <laughs> Yeah, the, yeah um, she's, she's one of the characters in the book. Yeah. There's, a, yeah. there's a, a really good friend of mine who plays in a home game I've been running for like five years now, and he plays a fighter bard uh, multi-class. <clears throat> and he's always coming to me saying like, I really love this spell. It's not a bard spell. Could we ha could we flavor something? And I'm like, yeah, let's let's make Tensor's transformation for bards because you've yeah. already got this fighting class, and so it kind of makes sense. And why why the hell not? Like the ru the rules. Right. Even the rules as written don't say you can't do these things. They, they specifically mm. say, like, one of the very first rules in the book is the DM can cho yep. choose as many of these rules yep. as they want. They can they can yeah. adapt them, change them, throw the whole book out. It doesn't matter. Like, as long as you're having fun, you're telling a story, you're trying to... you got to put some effort into, like, balancing it so that that guy doesn't feel like he's way more powerful than everybody else in the class. Yeah. But, yeah, you talk about these things. Like, he, he said, like, oh... I've just gotten to a fifth level bard, which means that I should be getting extra attack, but I've already got extra attack from fighter. Can I get a third attack? And I had to think else. about it for a moment. I was like, ah, oh, well, I suppose <laughs> by the time you got to 11th level fighter, you would have got three attacks anyway. So yeah, why not? Yeah. And then balance it right. with everybody else in the party, make sure everybody's fine with it. The rules are You're my too. kind of GM, Rob. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. it makes my Way day to, do to it. hear it. Can I just ask a little uh, self-indulgence from my co-hosts here, Dread, Dread and Dag? Can you can you give us some stories of bards in your campaigns through the years? Like, oh boy, what are some personal give me a second to think about it. Oh, oh. Well, I, I'll bring a super. I want one up super quickly because I do have other. I, I mean, yeah, I don't know if you can tell. I play lots of bards, um, <laughs> but uh, but there was one that I played very recently um, that uh, the chat will know, and of course Rob will know. Um, and that was uh, Salazar, yes, uh, oh. who was <laughs> who was a surprise bard. Um, he was a uh, he was a sentient sword. Um, it, was, <laughs> it was for the uh, it was for the one shot that I ran for Garycon. Um, yeah. and, oh, cool. and only Michael knew that he was going to be playing a sentient sword and a bard. And so, like, I had I had them introduced uh, introduced to this NPC. They didn't know it was an NPC. They thought I was introducing Michael's character. And then he, he he gives them a box, and they open it up, and then I say, "And what do they see, Michael?" Yeah, and then it was like this uh, this gleaming sword with runes on it, uh, a little um, red gemstone in the in the hilt. And uh, as soon as they as soon as they drew it, uh, it was basically just all all show at that point. Uh, basically, every time they drew, he went swing, and uh, you know would would communicate and try and because his only goal was to try and um, make whoever was wielding him a hero. 
but he was the oh. he, but he was the sort of many masters because he was so just uh, loud and obnoxious so that, extra you know, yeah and it was literally anyone who would pick it up so it would it wouldn't always be a hero it'd be like you know bill the farmer <laughs> yeah or, no, when we Pete, when you know? we're when we're introduced to him, this this NPC farmer that they, that's trying to pa- he's trying to pass him off because he's sick of this talking sword that's getting, <laughs> and he just wants a life as a farmer. But it because of like the curse, so we came up with like a hundred years of backstory about all his different <laughs> masters over the years, and like he just found him in a field nine months ago, so he's still bound to him. He tries giving him Aww. off to these main characters who go okay, and they they walk off, and then he disappears from their hand and lands in, back in in the farmer's hand, and he, and you just hear from the farmhouse. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> and then he's bound to go on the quest with them. It was fantastic. Peter, I've got good news. We have a quest. <laughs> if anybody watching does want to see that, it's available on my YouTube channel, Robert Hartley. Yeah, yeah. It's so fun. yeah it's, uh, it, he was he was so much fun. And the, the interesting thing there is that what made the character interesting was absolutely nothing to do with them being a bard. Um, I am very much a character driven gm like i uh, like even if the scenario doesn't call for a character one will find its way in the, into the scene to help and interact and engage whether the the room will come alive as i'm talking to people um but with salazar it was really interesting because everyone assumed like it's a sword it must be a fighter it must do damage it must do this it must do that but um they realized very quickly uh as i was trying to use a one minute spell called motivational speech and they went oh my god yeah. <laughs> every time he talked they would <laughs> shove him back in the in the scabbard and he wouldn't be able to get this spell off yeah i didn't That's get any hilarious. of the spells off um but it was hilarious it was so much fun and it wasn't it didn't have anything to do with um it didn't have anything to do with the the, the mechanics of it. it had everything to do with the the soul and the personality behind the bard and i think the best bards that i've ever played have exactly that. You don't know what they are until they use the mechanical abilities. And you don't, you know, rush into using those abilities. You know, sometimes you just play into the play into a moment. Uh, you just engage with uh, your fellow players and your GM, and you just end up losing yourself. And that, I mean, for me, those are my most memorable bards. And Salazar definitely was one of, uh, one of my more memorable ones from recent date. Um, not just because he was a sentient sword, but because um, yeah, the expectations of him as a magic sword. Oh, this magic sword's gonna be really powerful. No, wait, it's just super annoying. Um, <laughs> maybe it's a fighter. Okay, let's put him on the front line. Wait, nope, he's a bard. Okay, that's like, and? So what? I am also a sword. I am a sword and a bard. Things can be two things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just love that every single, without, like, he, Michael has a commitment to a role that every <laughs> single time in the entire one shot that he was drawn, he would orate loudly, swing! <laughs> how about you josh you got some stories um, about bards for us there's one we've got one big bard in our world and he's uh he's played he's my it's he's m's my wife's um uh, main oc and i'm i'm afraid of saying anything to do with spoilers um but Aww. she's went really deep into her backstory um the one thing i can say is that she has uh the music uh sheet on her tattooed on her arms but she uh her character's uh arms he he got his arms broken beaten in uh while he's on the road um and now there is something to do with a a certain fake court that i won't go into so i won't i i, I, I can't tell you the story without actually spoiling so oh, I won't say that. but what i will say um you can plug that try to gm come, come watch go. our awesome game um but we we there's one bar that i've always wanted to do uh at my table or have someone play which is the maester of misery the evil bard the one that wants Ooh. to hear and exact pain and agony and stuff like that and i always thought it was going to be a pure urnt uh that would play that we, just we like... have we can't we can't talk about it <laughs> yeah. we have there's a there's a very specific type of bard that I and also Rick Hines, who is our our writing director, yeah. um, we're really excited about. Yeah. Can you say what it well, means? Well, well, I, I mean, I, if, if you're okay with it, I'm okay with it. Yeah, yeah. 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 with that. Yeah, yeah. 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 go ahead. Oh, uh, College of Requiem. So it's our College of Requiem. Oh, yeah. Ooh. And it, yep. this is a very dark bard. Yeah, I love it. it's a very dark and like, it's been yeah. it's, it's your dark bard in, yeah, in, pre- dark in preparing bard. I'm for really this, excited about yeah, it. I've been watching Haunting. a lot of interviews of you guys talking about things, and it's so adorable every time that you're like really excited to talk about something, <laughs> and then you both look at each other as if to say, We haven't talked about this, about this one. Are we allowed at to all? say, What are we allowed to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so this is the first time we've talked this about first that. Time we've Exclusives! Yeah. Yeah, that's all yeah. the things! Yeah, <laughs> and so this, this, this bard uses their creative and artistic ability and uh, it can be can be musical doesn't have to be yeah. um could be or oration but for very like nefarious things yeah particularly around like 
I don't even know. excited? I know. I'm really excited about this part. Because there's the opposite side of inspiration and creativity, right? There's 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 so many facets that it touches. So and that's like narcissist part. Yeah. You know what? I'm 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 gonna be the one to say this, right? Like uh like I'm all about positivity and uplifting and stuff like that, but I gotta say the thing that kind of reached out to me most was the Emerald Cabal. Like oh they're so rich. Oh, yeah, yeah. and um, and I, I, I don't want to I don't want to give give much away in in regards to what I've read and stuff. I want people to go out there and pick up like the the, the one shot because the one shot is is just chock full of just so much inspirational stuff. Um, but one thing I loved was the idea of the agents that are named after kind of the gemstones and stuff like oh, that. Yeah. Because um, and a little bit about me, I I my my birthstone is sapphire and it has always represented. Oh. Love. Yeah. luck throughout my life like my i've got a sapphire dragon guarding my house uh without telling too much details on where i live let's just say that it involves a certain gemstone that i love um everything about my life has led to that and so when i when i found out about that i'm like the first character i am making is absolutely going to be an agent sapphire i'm like ah oh, yes yeah. <laughs> please let me do this somewhere and somehow um, i want this book now let's i love it like, now. I, love, I love the politics i love the sinister um you know sort of machiavellian Intrigue. kind of yeah, yeah it's just the Epicness. Yeah. Exactly <laughs> it. It's exactly so, it. Michael, when you were you were talking about Salazar then, and you were saying like there was uh, uh, almost a level of disappointment when people expect a fighter and get a bard. Now I've I've been a GM for only about five years. I, I discovered later in life that I was a nerd. Um, <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah, that's rad. And yeah. I and I just Before got into I just got into up. it in a huge way. Got absolutely binged Critical Role, all of your GM tips. Uh, Hell people, yeah. I, people will be looking at me going, oh, he's such a he's such a good DM, and oh, he's the best person in the world. I'm sure they say that all the time. Uh, and then, <laughs> but but now I've just I've invited on somebody that I've stolen from so heavily that they'll they'll start to realize Rob has just thieved all of his things. It's just taken. No, that's like, how that's, it works. That's art, man. That's, no, no, that's, that's art. art yeah. But that's also art. like literally what I wanted people to do for GM tips, right? Because yeah, a, a lot of people go, put out their yeah. own like, here's my two cents. It's like, no, 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 I'm good at what I do because of all these people, yeah. all the variety sure. of game masters I played with. So so thank you for watching it. And now it's your turn. Spread the word. Yeah, now, now, you, get you, to, now you get to teach other people. <laughs> yeah. Sure. So, uh, yeah. so because I'm relatively new to it, from, from, from my perspective, I've always loved bards. I've, I've lo I, I watched Scanlan in Critical Role and he's an amazing bard. And so I've to, to hear later that there's been this sort of stigma around bards, especially in like video games. Oh, a lot of people well. hate like, bards. What, <laughs> yeah, where this, can we talk about where that comes from? Yeah. Why was, why yeah, we can. Were hated. So back in the day, I've been playing for 33 <laughs> years, and long time ago, um, first it was a pain in the ass to even become a yeah, bard. So you had to, you had to bard. get a level of fighter, and then I mean, I'm sure I, I'm not going to list it, but everyone in chat, I'm certain that there are people out there. A lot of prerequisites to be able to like unlock. Yeah. And then it, they were basically your jack of all trades, and then they were support, and then they were kind of like annoying support, and they really didn't do much. You couldn't do anything as a bard until the recent years of Dungeons and Dragons. So if you can imagine, there's like 35, 40 years of people being annoyed by bards, mm. and. Um, you know, that was one of the reasons why I wanted to start the live show, Sirens. Uh, back it was Sirens of the Realms four years ago on the D&D Twitch. Now it's on my Twitch uh, at, with this whole new fourth season. And it's just, it, it was so astounding because I was like, I'm so clever. I'm going to make something that's gem and she and it's going to be empowering <laughs> and full of light. And it's going to be a lot of dark points, but it's going to be really <laughs> full of light. And I wanted to uplift everyone because there's enough, you know, evil, dark stuff out there. Yeah. And the the first response was bars. Really? <laughs> I was like, why would you say it like that? That's rude. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna point a finger actually uh, at a friend of mine. Um, so um, Zombie Orpheus Entertainment, which used to go by Dead Gentleman, uh, actually released a movie um, really early on called um, The Gamers: Darkness Rising. Uh, yeah. It was a great, great movie, absolutely fantastic yeah. movie, and um, and the the cast and the the direction and the writers of that were were very very clever, and one of the things um, that they did as an ongoing joke of that 
was of course the bard constantly dying like constantly <laughs> like just in in every scenario he would die and in one of the scenes uh the player actually comes in with a folder uh, and 50 bards having been made um and and one of the most famous uh memes around it has been uh i dive behind the mound of dead bards <laughs> <laughs> and, and it, it definitely uh and and that movie actually became very uh very prominent like there are very few people in in, in the rpg scene that haven't seen that movie and if you haven't seen that movie go see that movie it's a fantastic go see it. name, go name see one it. more time uh, the Gamers Darkness Rising. Gamers That's, it's Darkness. the second movie of the Gamers series. There is a first movie, which is great. Um, it was their first Cutting Teeth movie. And then the second one was fantastic. Third one was about Magic the Gathering. And they've just released a series uh, ah. that follows the adventure from the first movie, but with their full production and everything that they've learned. Um, so they're, they're wonderful people. Zombie Orpheus Entertainment. Um, uh, just absolutely wonderful filmmakers. But yeah, um, and when I was first getting into role playing and stuff like that, um, I was absorbing entertainment more than I was absorbing, absorbing you know, game knowledge. So um, I didn't get into game tips, no offense, until much later on um, when my missus turns around and says, check out this awesome thing. And I was like, okay. Uh, and then I just watched whatever she, she put in front of me. And this was actually one of the first things that I saw. So even before I got into d and I already knew that bards suck. You know, like that was, <laughs> <laughs> that, was that, that was the whole thing I'd learned from that. So, um, so media and uh, I guess the way that people talk about bards is often a, a very big um, stereotype that uh, definitely doesn't hold water nowadays. Um, I, I would say it doesn't even hold water in D and D three point five. Like um, yeah. the fuck uh, for Lucan bard, which used to be the druid bard, was one of my favorite um, builds for for D and D three point five, where you basically just play instruments and nature itself shifts to your whim i mean weak if you say so but it's not what i see uh so yeah it's it's been a while since uh i think bards have been bad but the stigma is just carried uh carried did all you, that time did you feel book... sorry go on josh oh, i was just gonna say this book's gonna change everything for bards yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. no pressure no pressure <laughs> no, I've, I've done uh, i've done a lot of homebrewery sort of stuff in my in my time homebrewing classes and things and and homebrewing subclasses seems like quite a balance issue like did you did you take into account people's expectation that bards were bad or did you already acknowledge hey in fifth edition bards are actually pretty powerful and we, we don't need to up our subclasses any more powerful than that we're, we're not trying to prove ourselves yeah. and we're not yeah. trying to out anything with anyone yeah. Yeah. we are just mm. saying these things are cool and also these things are really cool yeah, yeah. and wouldn't you like to play with these two in your right. arsenal of things that you yeah. can play with how yeah, did... i think i think that that there's been a lot, a lot of really cool, particularly some of the stuff that's come out very recently. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and yeah. Like, uh, oh, yeah, I got the and, Van Richten yeah, the guy. Yeah, oh. Guy oh, my really God. Cool. I, so I haven't got mine yet. I, I can't, yeah. and I can't share it. Yeah. And it comes out on the 18th. And yeah. so we op we crack it open, and it's just it's, like... Yeah, absolutely gorgeous, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, you know, even then, like, I will say to all my players, you know, you can use any of the D&D &D books when you make your characters yeah. and also our books yeah. because yeah. Um, it, it's it's just more good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we we really want to, 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 give, to give people a, a way to appreciate the class in a, in a slightly new way mm. without, um, I, I don't know, really looking at the artistry and, and, and trying to say, okay, what, what has been done and not, not to try and fix or change yeah. but just to build on top of that and mm. again it's the same thing that we did with our warlock book okay so it's like warlocks are in my opinion actually really really cool um but a lot of people like either look down on them it, they had kind of a weird history because they came later and yeah. just like bards right. and I, I think gamers can get very set in this is what i think is cool or works right. or right or oh that does this doesn't make sense and then that just kind of carries over like through culture which is kind of like yeah come on, guys. there is all, there is one thing it's, that I it's like interesting that about. Because our, my, our tables are very warlock heavy. So our tables yeah. are filled with warlocks. So I have warlock stories for you. I don't have bar yeah, stories. Really cool. <laughs> I have warlock oh, stories. Oh, you're going to like this. You will yeah. really like this book. <laughs> you should really check it out. Well, yeah. Yeah. What was the thing? Oh, oh sorry. Yeah. yeah, we'll send, we'll send, we'll send you guys oh, a yeah. yeah, if you can come check it out. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. super, super quick just just does the the bard book and the warlock book kind of intermingle like could 
do you make bard locks super well? <laughs> I take that fight. Dang it! Bard, bard lock oh, is awesome. Koi's eye of, yeah, we, yeah. We, we can, uh, yeah, well, yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> bard, bard, bard locks are super rad. So, so how, how, how we as a studio are kind of conceptualizing what we're doing, we're trying to build um, these standalone settings as cities and these cities mm. that are, are, are founded and govern slash run by that class. What would it be like if your your majority ruling class was of that that class? Um, it would highly affect that setting. Um, and we have characters that move throughout them. Um, Vajra, the, the, the character that I play, um, he is a, a character that that is both from uh, he is, is part of uh, the Shadelands of Yonkoth. That's the city's name for our, our warlock book, the Red Opera. Um, and he's also now a, a main NPC um, for Sirens Battle of the Bards. The Mother of Mirrors, who is a patron, is closely tied to Vlanya, which is Satine's character. And we don't want to get into too much like spoiler uh, stuff about kind of how that operates. Um, but these settings currently are are independent and yet we will in time we have this planned out it's really very elegant in my opinion uh plan on kind of mcu style build like yeah. currently they're, they're, they're pylons then yes. having them interact with each other um and having characters weave through them and so then telling a meta story on top Hells of them. and so that you can plant them in whatever setting anywhere you, you want, want. yes so, so nice. say you like yeah. yeah that's one of the yeah. things that i love most about the sirens battle of bards is that I, I fell in love with it when i watched the the uh, kickstarter for it and although i use homebrew worlds for everything that i do I could go. I could go. This is just a city. I can just take the city and plunk Anywhere it down in want. the desert. I have I a desert in my mind again. that some of my home games are going to soon. Boom! Yeah, as soon yeah. as they walk through the desert, Amazing. they'll see the city, and then I've yeah. it's already yeah. made. Wonderful. And Yonkoth is in the far north. So yeah. what we've been able to do is say, here are cities that make sense for the different pieces of your world. And obviously, we have the warlockbook.com and the bardbook.com. So you can imagine what we have. We have we have the other dot coms too. I was yeah. gonna I was gonna say so... is Paladin <laughs> next or yeah. Yeah, so I like I do like Paladin. Yeah, I like sorcerers uh, as well. Yeah, working so... on another city is that is that, is yeah. that genuinely yeah. a consideration for a popular yeah. system? Oh, 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 no, we're doing it. We're big, doing big it. Time. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. We, we're uh, our thing is trying to figure out like how fast we can pump books up. Yeah, <laughs> like, and still yeah. have them be and still yeah. have them be a, a quality that yeah. Like we, we that's use, the most important. We, we use ourselves like I I am my own. That, like I'm, I am such a harsh critic, and so yeah. it's like, would I spend money on this? Would I run this? And if yeah. I wouldn't run it, and I've had to go back to, I'd have to go back to my people. I've been like, guys, like, this would you, it. would you spend sixty dollars on this, like on this piece of thing? They'd be like, well, I think it's no, dude. Like, no, it, it either is you, you either need to be so excited about this, you yeah. are, you'd be willing to shell out money for it, or yeah. like. We're, we what, can't expect other point? people to yeah. do that. That's ridiculous. And we're um, both collectors too, yeah, so yeah. everything has to make sense and yeah. have form and function. Yeah. Like so, for instance, uh, the thing that I well actually that's like my the thing is uh, design, like book design, game master, screen design. Mm. So I won't poop on other people's subclasses because I really like the way things work. But I'm gonna will actually the heck out of the way books are laid out. Oh my god, yeah. 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 And I was showing him my other game master screens and I was like, okay, honey, so if I had <laughs> my chance to do this, I'm gonna go ahead and it's gonna be like this. And this is how it's gonna look, and then this is gonna be here, and this is gonna be here, so you can easily and then you fold your laptop back and then it has this. See, look at that. Yeah, yeah. I, I had the I had the very exciting situation that you're exactly talking about. So for the uh, the game that I run for Viva La Dirt League, our channel's on yes. 180,000 now, and so we decided. I, I love know. Viva La Dirt League, by the way. They're, you do? they're awesome. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, I've been I've been wa I've been watching those videos like way back at what was it uh five pool or four pool? I don't remember. Like way 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 back wow. like 10, 10 years ago. That's yeah, so I'm I'm it. I'm actually I'm a huge yeah, fan. Well, yeah. Well, uh, about a year year and a half ish ago, we started a, a secondary channel for them, Viva La Dirt League D and D, and I run that. Very cool. Um, That's very and cool. And we and and we designed uh, a a custom made board and they asked me hey what do you Show want on the inside it. of it and i was like so oh my god it. i got to decide i got to design everything that i wanted everything yeah, that I yeah. Look at everything that. i actually use and nothing that i don't it was wonderful oh congratulations yeah, absolutely yeah. Wonderful. so we're trying to design the book and this is like i did packaging design and you know i, I teach storytelling and it's like how do you create things so efficiently i'm a script writer you know like like everything has to be super tight and also, if you open a page, your eyes have to function. Yeah. They have to yeah. have like boom, boom, boom information. Yeah. So if you go to the chapter one in the sample, you can see, and we still are going to evolve this a bit. Uh, 
But you can see here's the pillars of play. When you go to an encounter, here's brief stats on the encounter. So you had, you know, oh, okay, this is what I have to prepare as a game master. Uh, it's so exciting to yep. me uh, that the design. Oh, yeah. it's and, so and, and, it's like, such yeah. an important thing as well that you don't like. Some people are like, oh, you just have as long as the information's in the book, they'll find it. But like. I've, no, I've been playing no, for no. years, oh, no, no. And, I've, and I'm recently <laughs> yeah. doing uh, on my channel. I'm doing a Robert Reed series where I'm reading through some of the modules and the books and things. I'm yeah. reading through the Monster Manual, and like dragons, you think you know dragons? I started reading through. I was like, I saw a little side piece that I've never read before, and I was like, Why have I never read? Oh, it's because it's a tiny little green box down in the corner, yeah. and it's not. It's, yeah. it's overpowered yeah. by this big picture of a dragon and this stat block of a dragon and stuff. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, good, good to know <laughs> information I've never seen before because right. right. the eye isn't drawn to it when you open the page. I actually, for monster stats, I, I, now I skip the stat block and mm. I just read the bottom part because I know that in game, the way it's laid out, I'll be able to quick reference things, Yeah. but it's that block underneath yeah. that you're like, oh, this is the character. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, for sure. So I, I get so, it. I get so you. <laughs> you mentioned that you were, uh, you, you were into script writing. When can we see the uh, Salvada movie? Just saying, you know, I mean, putting that out there. Uh, graphic, yeah. yes. graphic novel first. Yeah. Graphic novel first. Graphic novel first. You got the well, siren show. Well, if you ever need some, some talented Australian voice actors, I mean, just saying, like, you know, <laughs> three very nice. handsome. And <laughs> yeah. I, I'm known for doing <laughs> accent work on my, work, on my channel. Um, <laughs> just to change texts a little back towards the role playing of bards, um, people who feel, even if they they're creative in certain ways, don't feel confident with performative um, artistry and, and, and uh, creativity in that sense. How would, uh, what sort of tips can we give to people who are playing a creative character without being feeling creative themselves? Yes, um, you don't have to do things on the spot. Hmm. You can, uh, if you have a character, you build your character, you know the spells that you're gonna have. I say go and research stuff online. If you want to just prepare images because you have an artist bard, you want to prepare haikus because you're a haiku poet. I don't know. Um, if you if you have if you build your bard so it is, um, n you it's not a thing where you have to stand in front of everyone and do da 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 da, -da. Mm. like try to build it in the background and maybe your thing is whispering in each other's ear in another person's ear maybe you slide them a note i've been talking to a lot of people who are very shy and uh D, D allows you the practice to come out of your shell but it doesn't mean that you can create on the fly so think about artificers artificers are awesome because they build mechanics and they have things that they're they use but they usually do that on their downtime like while they're in their like eight mm. hours of rest you know so that you, when you're in battle, your homunculus activates and then you can go and do stuff. So think about, I would say, think about it that way. Have stuff prepared so that you can just do the thing. Yeah, yeah. a lot of a lot of our players over here um, on my channel, we all pre-prep our spell descriptions. They do a lot of work behind the scenes before they bring it to the table. And then the other thing is we just try to build that, that really creative space where we can express ourselves but i love that's the one thing that i love about tabletop role-playing games is that it allows people to rediscover that creativity and also give them the platform to uh, express themselves the best that they can at the time uh the one thing i would say on to add on to what satine just said is always play forward try if you don't hit it go again because there's always another game you can always try again yeah yeah um, for me, I um, I so I work in uh, in the Australian government teaching role playing games to kids. So um, a lot of the kids that I end up working with are kids who are dealing with things like social anxiety and stuff like that. And uh, you know, playing bardic characters who do try to perform uh, is a very very um, real thing when whenever we do character creation. And the one thing I always tell them is the exact is is I tell everyone um, I don't expect my barbarian to be able to heft this 10 kilo hammer in order to swing his axe. Exactly. I don't expect you to have to sing a song in order to make your bard use their abilities. It's, if you want to try and show off and, and really express yourself, express yourself because you're being creative. But if you don't want to, simply having that vocabulary to say that um, you watch as my bard begins to, um, to produce a fantastic yes. sonnet motes of light begin to stream from their lips totally. and form there musical you. notes yeah. boom there you go um so i really promote more than anything as far as artisticness goes uh oration because oration in role playing can let you do anything even if you can't do a voice or an accent 
um, it allows you just by having a good vocabulary and the confidence to uh, express that uh, to be able to do anything a bard could do and translates to all the skills of all the classes you know it's, it's something that i find is uh, there's a disconnect between the mental stats and the physical stats in dnd you don't expect so, yeah you can you can you say you don't say i'm going to break down this door and then you don't have to roll for it no you you break you ask i'm going to break down the door and then you roll and then that tells you whether you succeeded in breaking down the door or not but when yeah. it comes to the the mental stats intelligence charisma that sort of thing often will say something first oh i'm going to charm the guard and i'm going to say this and then you roll and then it should really be the other way around almost it should be that yeah, you yeah. roll to yeah. see how well do i get to go ahead with trying to charm this guard and then you get a three and you're like okay so now i can then describe how i how i screw up charming this guard yeah. what do i what do i stutter over my words do i accidentally insult his mother you it, it's it's too much pressure sometimes on people who aren't actors and performative types yeah to say you've got to tell me exactly the wording you're going to use in character and be your character uh and, and then roll and tell and, yeah you know it's yeah and remember that backwards a bit. creativity is contagious right so the more you do it at the table the more you inspire, inspire others to do it and it's oh, collaborative sure. when we sit down at the table to do it too so that's the one thing i'll see with my players is that once someone's being their creative everyone else wants to get in on it and it's yeah what's the mad it's, it's in my opinion the, the magic of tabletop role playing yeah, games. It, yeah, and Sirens, uh, Sirens Song of Salvata, we're not <laughs> saying you have to be Jason Charles Miller, who literally is a real life bard. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, my goodness. Yeah. You don't have to be a belly dancer like Girasol. You don't have to be, you know, any of these people. The, what these shows do is they show you and um, how it can be done. Yeah. It allows your imaginations to ignite, and that's it. It like. The bards that you see on TV are there to inspire you. Yeah. Turtle vibe. Ah. Hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. Um, yes. So uh, you're working with um, virtual tabletops a lot for this uh, this this yeah. campaign as well. Uh, all of them, in fact, more than I'd even heard of. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, goodness, there's there's a lot more virtual tabletops. Oh, there's actually there's, more. There's out even there more. Too. We we <laughs> had a conversation with a potentially up and coming VTT platform that yes, yeah, Today, yeah, yeah. There, there's oh, a wow. lot of them. Yeah, yes, yeah. there are a lot of them. Yeah. So. Uh, I, I, you've talked um, on other interviews about this um, this campaign setting about how there's like renown system and fame system and things that you're tracking it, depending on who you're helping and what you're seeing and uh, who sees you helping other factions and things within the city, all that stuff. Yeah. That seems like the sort of thing that you could uh, sort of keep a track of more easily with virtual tabletops and, and that sort of uh, number crunching. Are you, are you speaking with them about that kind of stuff, like ways to yeah. keep a track of it's the a... more number side of things? Yeah. Absolutely. So it's a core, it's a core element of, of the game itself. Um, and so um, the VTTs are so fantastic. I mean, again, they are basically just, you know, a, a, the idea of a video game as applied to tabletop role playing. Mm. And so for them to uh, track those statistics are super easy for them. Um, now, certain platforms are designed to do other things better than others and each kind of fit their own niche. Um, and so I'm sure that some of the implement, you know, how they implement it will be a little bit different depending on the system. Um, but stuff like that, I mean, it, it's it, that is that's that is child's play for them. Now yeah. for us, it's it's much 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 more challenging to make sure that it's balanced. It's yeah. got it's got to both be balanced mm -hmm. and be um, very concise and and self you know self referencing. In a, in, a, in a way that makes sense and then be very easy for the GM to use. Um, if it's too too convoluted or too complicated, um, I myself have in the past just take look at looked at a system and said, wow, I don't want to calculate this on the fly. I throw it out and make my own. Mm. Um, now, again, like I'm a game dev, so I can do that and I can have it make sense and I can entertain my my table. Yeah. Um, but we don't want to have to have yeah, our when game you're, masters when you're throw a, out yeah. our thing. No. So we want to design it in, in a way that is, is really very, very logical um, and, and in a way that they can use seamlessly so it, it feels natural and it's a pleasure for them to use and yeah. the, for their players then so experience. like you know we have our, our crew has a lot of years of experience as game masters as well as 2c gaming we are reaching out to help us um fine tune and triple check and, and really get into the mechanics because you know we could 
having another set of eyes on the mechanics is really important. Make sure and, and other counts. brains too. You yeah, know? particularly because we, we have stat blocks for um, uh, tiers two, three, and four. Um, and so for all of our mate, and you can see this in our free sample at thebardbook.com, uh, Naya, uh, one of our um, kind of one of our enemies, uh, depending on how you, how you decide to do that campaign, mm. uh, we have stat blocks for her uh, for you know each each of those level sets um, to yeah. have that you know, make, make sense because uh, again, as you were kind of uh, talking before, Rob, we envision these cities, you can plop them wherever you want in your campaign. And again, just because, you know, Selvat is in a desert, you could have it be in a, in a, a on top of a mountain if you want. It doesn't have right, to yeah. be a desert. You could put it wherever you, you'd like. I mean, you can use it however you'd like too as a setting. Um, we've had people run campaigns um, with the Shadelands and they don't even use uh, the core campaign. They use it in reference for some other thing. They have characters having to go there on a quest, get something and then come back because they right. want it to be a warlock infused quest. Yeah. Um, and so to, to have those things be very seamless um, and, and fitting, you know, it, modular um, is, is really exciting. Yeah, Hells yeah. It, it is. A, it's a lot of work on our end to be able to craft it. This is like yeah. we're puzzle bards here, yeah. you know, yeah. we're crafting this so okay. that when it gets to you, you're like, oh, A, B, and C. Okay. Yeah. I just think of what would I want, you know, and, yeah. and if I, if, if it, if it, if I can use it, it would make sense to me and I would enjoy it, then it, it like passes the bar of, of, of approval. And if not, then we go back and we redesign it. Yeah, and you know, we're also like, we're both game devs, right? But we're also we, for tabletop games, but also we love video games. Yeah. And I, I love the way video games are laid out and how complex and, and uh, simple they are, but also like choose your own adventures. Mm. and. Uh, a couple years ago, I started getting into uh, really into escape rooms, and yeah, two drums. Mm -hmm. um, reading this, oh, on Robert, escape rooms reading this on Robert and... Reed's at the moment. <laughs> Hell's oh, awesome. that's wonderful. Um, or I guess Dungeons and Dragons are called endless quests because yeah. they're not ad two drum adventures. Yeah. Um, but escape rooms and VR game design. So you know, and, you yeah, basically yeah. And as an AR. And, and AR. Uh, well, the book that I was reading was virtual, uh, virtual gaming. So what I really like is the idea that we are the wielders of worlds, mm. right? And it's mm. us. It's, it's our. It's important for us to remember that the people at our table are sitting there and are mind melding with yeah. us. Yeah. We're mm. able mm. to, to remove them from their reality yes. and place them inside of a virtual reality. We were playing Demio this weekend. And if you haven't, it's a really cool Oculus cool. game. Yeah. But being in that world at a virtual table, moving minis, looking around a basement, um, it, I don't need that because mm. the games that I play at were so immersed that I blink and I'm in yeah. a forest. I yeah. blink and I'm at my table. Yeah. I mm -hmm. blink and I'm in a desert, you know? Ah, so it's how see, do you craft yeah. a game and write it into a module so it feels virtual? Mm -hmm. A few you few know? of my friends gave me the best compliment I, I, and they, they weren't really even intending it that way, but um, we were celebrating the fourth year of us playing that homebrew game. And they were, talking, oh, they were just sort of reminiscing about things that we'd done over the years of playing that campaign. And one of them goes, I don't remember sitting at the table for any of that. I remember being in the werewolf camp in and it. I remember yeah. being in a prison yeah. cell and I remember being yeah. on the mountainside and I rem and I was like, oh, thank God. Like, it's such a, it's such a good Secret feeling. stage of play. Yeah. yeah. That you've yeah. managed to yeah. fully immerse them to the point where they, they genuinely have memories of their characters being in those situations and fearing for their own lives. It's, uh, yeah. Oh, and so Jameson and I both studied, well, he actually went to school for it, for uh, psychology. And I did a lot of studying. I'm writing a book on how Dungeons and Dragons has helped me through trauma and PTSD. Yeah. Mm. But um, one of the things that we talked about is how, you know, how healing games are and how part of, well, the st things that I studied for PTSD specifically was, you know, creating memories that, uh, that overwrite. And with gaming, you can create um, in two hours, you can create a year's worth of experiences. Yeah. And those are so, they're, they're valid. They are just as valid as when you go um, out and doing things with your friends at a, a bar or, you know, going to the movies. But being able to have them tangible and holding each other's hands, shoving a healing potion down someone's throat because, like, they've failed two death saves, you yeah. know? Like, 
That is, that's epic. It yeah. really is. Yeah, I, I just can't imagine, I can't even begin to fathom the amount of work that it goes into creating s- such a module that has all of these different endings and all of these different interacting factions, as well as cramming 20 quests, 10, 10 sort of main quests and 10 sub- side quests into, into a 10 day period. Where, where does it even, is it just from experience of having done things on a smaller scale and then sort of working your way up to that? How, how do you even begin balancing yeah, it's, it's something su- like it's that? It's super, super helpful. So uh, myself and, and, and Rick Hines, um, and then uh, two of our other writers, uh, Joseph Osfahani, um, and then also, um, gosh, uh, Pat, I, Pat, Patrick Pat, Edwards, yeah. uh, I was facing his last name for a second, um, which is funny because his book is called Space Tripping. Um, we're all published <laughs> authors. Um, and so we are world builders. So we, 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 we do this. Yeah, yeah, me. I know, I know. Yeah, I'm, me. I'm, I'm, I'm first talking about, first <laughs> okay. talking about Bathios's team and then talking about the team. Uh, okay. Yeah, don't well, worry, I'm baby. Cool. <laughs> I, know, I, know, <laughs> I know, baby. I know, baby. I'm going to get in trouble now. I was going to, I was there. You gotta, no, please, guys. You're, go you're going to get a really great payoff compliment, but you jumped the gun on it. <laughs> it's all right. It's okay. I just want to be a part of it. I know, I know. You got, as a storyteller, baby, you can't yeah. don't jump the shirt. You gotta let me build up to it, and then you get the good payoff at the end. So okay, go ahead, I'll go just start over. And then the, the, the punch we'll cut this out. The punch there's no, there's nobody watching. We're not doing it live. Yeah, the, it's fine. Yeah, we'll edit it. We'll edit it. It's not going to be as good now, but that's yeah. fine. I love you. <laughs> you guys are so no. damn cute together. So, I know. Congratulations oh, on your marriage, by the way. Oh, oh thanks thank so you. much. <laughs> Hopefully she doesn't divorce me. Um, so, never. <laughs> I'm never. just I'm just oh. Um so we 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 are we're published authors. So we it's our job to build build these worlds. Um and uh, you know, several of us. This is all we do full time too. So we just we just write mm. stories. Um, and so having built our own worlds, and then um, for this last book, this Warlock book, we built a world collaboratively. Uh, and Rick Hines was really kind of the the, the mainstay there. Mm. Um, we were able to each shine our own creativity into it and co collaborate a world. Um, and it was fantastic. We learned so much too. It, it is such an unwieldy project um, for you guys running homebrew. Um, imagine you have your homebrew campaign but then you need to build it out so concretely that other people can then yeah. be in it because you yeah. can't just make it up on the fly you have to give mm. them the tools so they can make it up on the fly yeah and so yeah. you then have to create a thing and then look at it and punch holes into it knowing that other people will punch holes into it which is their job because they punch holes to try to make sure that the plot points make sense mm. yeah um, so i'm just constantly just like just shooting <laughs> trying to find the holes yeah. yeah and i ask everyone on the team please punch holes into what i'm saying too because uh, we we need to produce something that other people can really use and so then on top of that then here's your payoff baby yeah. then we get Satine <laughs> Phoenix to join the team um, I know not as much fun after that so then we have Satine <laughs> Phoenix who is you know has has more dungeon mastering experience than anyone that I know personally I mean she's absolutely fantastic mm. um, and so to be able to have her ability and her her understanding um, with Dungeons and Dragons in fifth edition and you know fourth edition people have all of it and then shining that into the system and into the world is really fantastic and that's something for I wish that we had had you part of the Warlock book too. Um, uh, she she was there and helped us with layout at the end of the book, um, and so uh, you can still feel feel a bit of Satine in there. But with Sirens, she's you know there from the very beginning, um, and will hopefully be here for all of our <laughs> other books as well. Um, and and to be able to have that level of expertise has been fantastic. And so in a lot I mean, of ways, you she's, know, uh, she's I. She's no me, to be honest. She's not. Um, and it's 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 been really a very schooling experience uh, for for Rick and Rick and I. Uh, Rick and Rick Hines is fantastic. Again, he's you know he's been mm. a game master forever. And I've I've been playing TTRPG since you know since grade school. Um, and so like I've been doing this for a long time. But you can do it, and then you can do it professionally. You've been doing it professionally for a long time. And so yeah. to have that level of expertise shown into the project um, has been just radically eye opening. It's been very educational. Yeah, mm. in, in in the best of ways. I, I can't I believe you thought you. I was gonna leave you fitting, out. Fitting <laughs> such a, fitting such a lot of content into such in like a ten day period within the book. How yeah. do you account for time wasters and and players players who want to go shopping for two days? Like how do you account uh, for that? That's one of the, sh- the my, holes you have to shoot into it. I imagine. Yeah, my totally. favorite c word consequences. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you gotta give them consequences. So one of the things that the most profound 
style of dungeon mastering that I've experienced is live stream dungeon mastering. You have to cram a lot. And so you're pre-planning a lot, um, you know, for story arcs and such. And if you're doing eight episodes or 12 episodes or 16, you, you actually have to prepare. Um, you have to l allow your players to maneuver, but you're also truncating things. Mm. So you're not only doing it to entertain your players, but you're there to entertain the viewers, right? And how do you do that and not have the players feel like, oh, I guess I'm going left. <laughs> oh, I guess I'm going right. Yeah, so yeah. utilizing the skills that uh, we've learned through live stream gaming um, and then putting that into this system is really important. You know, in in live stream gaming, you, you they buy in. They yeah. the whole purpose of them sitting at the tables. Mm -hmm. They've already buy bought yeah. in. So you cut that out, and then um, we have mechanics here to session zero backstory. So one of the things that I love doing is like a five to ten minute. This is your experience together. You've been together for three years. This is an experience. Let's build you a, a mock back background together. Mm -hmm. And it teaches, and what we have in the book actually teaches the players um, about each other and the game master. It, it teaches the game master how they are going to relate. And it builds this communication between them that every time I play tested this at like, you know, the last three or four years at conventions, it's worked every single time. I've never seen um players go off they always bond just yeah. so tight and they always reference back to that yeah. original thing sometimes i'll add a character to this pre-game like role play and i'll kill the character like okay how did this person die yeah. why did are they not yeah. with you and they will uh, i call it the red shirt and they're like oh the red shirt oh man if only we had the red shirt here <laughs> it is phenomenal so you can build years of backstory over the course of three minutes yeah exactly yeah. and so building that into the campaign is super important what i i i can run a game with like three words hmm. but if i in this game we're like this is how you prepare your game. We're going to give you very specific ways. If you prepare it like this and you go in and you session zeros your players like this, they will go there knowing what quest they're on. They, the letter they get from Vlanya is call to adventure. Yeah. Here's your quest. Hurry up. Hurry up. You know, the, the so they should they should already uh, be coming to the one. city wanting to adventure and quest. So they're yep. not going to get to the city and then be like, let's go shopping. They, they should really yep. be if you've done yeah. session zero in preparation for the campaign right, they should be like, let's hit the ground running and do the thing and talk to the people and get and this. Show, showing the stakes too, uh, having them understand what's at stake and, and, and what is their motivation. And that's the same if, like, if you really if you read a great novel. Now, some novels will start out slow on purpose, mm. but again, that's a novel. Usually you don't start out your TTRPG campaign slowly unless you know mm. you're going to be playing for you know like yeah. several months. Yeah. Um, but for a lot of people, particularly one shots, I think it's why you do such a good job at one shots. It's like, okay, we have two and a half hours. We got to Get, let's get to the adventure. <laughs> yeah. Let's do yeah. it. You know, we can't waste time. Yeah, the and time is so important in this game. Sometimes at my convention games, I'll have a timer, and I'm like, tick tock, yeah. it's <laughs> happening, yeah. and they're like, ah. But in in this game, we we say there is a clock. Yep. The clock is ticking, and yeah. these are the things that are happening. So. Um, the game as I don't think we actually had it in in it, chapter it's, it's one. Not, it, it's not in chapter it's one. It's not. Yet. Um, but we have a timeline, mm -hmm. right? So these are all the things that are happening yep. along the timeline at every single chapter. Here's how the puzzle. It's all a chess game, right? It's yeah. all just massive pieces moving around. Yeah. And you know, from when you're here, uh, when you start the chapter to here this is how the rest of the world is going to be maneuvering because right. they all have agendas, right? So yeah. if you can show your players that there's consequences to their actions yep. and that all the other players are going to go about their business without them, and if they don't do something, everything's gonna fall apart. And, and NPCs will, will so uh, one of the things we can talk about is our fiend system. So um, we're very, very, very proud of this. Um, and, and Rick Hines uh, is, is, again, he, really oh, really yeah, great creative really creative cool. partner um 
we have created a fiend system. So this is what the Emerald Cabal is trying to draw down through this portal. They're, they're, they're trying to draw a fiend down. If you do nothing, bad, very bad things will happen in the city. And Vlani's and the world. about that. And, and the whole world, like right? Because it just, you have a yeah. fiend not just being able to influence, but actually like physical manifestation here. And that's kind of like the beauty mm. of Selvatch as a superstructure, this, you know, this mathematician bard. Um, so we have this this true this this true name system that allows the characters um, to try and gain power over the fiend. The Emerald Cabal is doing this too because they don't want to just have an unleashed fiend. They want to bind the fiend, but the Herald wants it to be unleashed. And so there's there's varying factions and, and positions that you can ally yourself with, or you can can ally yourself with yeah, both and, and play There's play. A lot, a lot of I'm just I don't know. I'm just like geeking out. With all geeking I'm out. Out. <laughs> You're a GM. I'm a spoiler. <laughs> all are nobody no nobody say anything. No, nobody nobody, shit, nobody cut him off. The GM. Let him keep talking. The GM. They're all in the secret. <laughs> You're all in on this. Like, yeah, yeah. 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 Everybody <laughs> watching. You're now. part of the. Everybody <laughs> watching. Part of the secret GM club. The secret GM club. Yeah. 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 And, and so from this perspective, if you don't go and do the quest necessary to get these true name fragments, other people oh. will too. And so it, 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 it really awesome. creates this sense of urgency. True names. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, uh, I love yeah. true names so much. Uh, I, I uh, you're going to like yeah. this because uh. um, and the replayability is really important for us as well. So uh, we have designed not just the, the way that works in the world, but how the game master sets it up yep. to influence the way that the Emerald Cabal acts, right? So, and I, I can't remember the, the the probability of like how many different things you can create from. Uh, oh, we have a mathematician here. Oh, yeah. There's three, three, <laughs> the order of 10, three times, three times 10, right? Whatever, there, there's, there's a lot of variation. So we have, uh, I think mean, how, much, how, much, how much spoilers yeah, yes, do you want? Yes. How much spoilers do you want to give know. away? Mathematically, that works so, out as a gigazillion. I think. <laughs> gigazillion. Uh, I will quote you on that. Good yes, very technical. Yeah. Um, so so that, I, 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 for yeah, the longest the time, I've wanted to. Oh, wow. for the longest time, I've wanted to play uh, a proper true naming uh, PC. One, 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 one of the times, yeah. like just the, just the idea of being able to use different letters in different ways in different orders, because um, linguists. Um, linguistics is a, a, a kind of an interest of mine, especially in the way that uh, the mannerisms change based on the type of alphabet you're trying to use uh, yes. together with um, how it is spoken, even inflections and accents um, for oration versus um, the different types of dialects you might use within the written script are just so fascinating for me. And I'm like, you know, like a lot of my wizards, especially, will actually delve into that. Where um, one of the things I actually did, which annoyed one of my GMs actually, was I coded my um, my spell book, um, and I actually <laughs> I actually uh, wrote down the spell book, but I actually had a cipher that my character oh, actually knew. Cool. So so we actually had a situation because the GM was well known for this. Like he likes to do stuff like, "Aha, your paladin accidentally murdered a child. You've lost also your powers. Aha, <laughs> your spell book is washing down the river. Good luck with that." You know, so he was well known for it. So I created a cipher and, you know, I actually had it because I wrote my spell book down. And That'll he said, haha, I've stolen your spell book because he's used like a rogue to steal it. Now give me your spell book. And I gave it to him. He says, what's this? I'm like, it's my spell book. And I was like, and I read it out to him and I was reading it out perfectly. And he's like, I hate you so much. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. No, no, no. The rogue who stole your spell book hates you so much, right? <laughs> yes, that's yeah, true. Yeah, exactly. definitely, yeah, that's true. The rogue, definitely right? not yeah. a level of GM in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, so speaking of uh, how much you can cram into a 10-day, um, there is, I, I believe, 10 days left of the Kickstarter. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. So, uh, look at that. We timed it perfectly. Seamless, seamless segue, Rob. Thank you. Um, <laughs> So the Kickstarter has smashed through its goal and most of its stretch goals as well. Uh, so it's yeah, going to be it's going to be happening. It's going to be coming about one way or another. Oh, so, in, a in a big way. <laughs> so so tell me why why should the people watching go and go and pledge to it now rather than just waiting for it to come out? What is still what is still the incentives, the stretch goals? That so still to be so we we actually added more pledge or more stretch goals um, to even to make the book even better. And so. Um, we we had had kind of our, our current set of stretch goals and then we added additional ones to to try and really focus on you know what if, if people really can can back us now and, and give us the capital to make the book even better we're going to do that we're then going to leverage it to make the book better um, yeah. again we're, we're an indie studio and so like this literally like 
pays our payroll. Like I'm CEO of the company. It, all I think about is payroll. It's just like, I'm a payroll bar. Of, of how can I make sure that my team members have food to eat? Um, the accountant, that, the I, accountant bar. It's a, it it's is, a subclass man, of the we, mathematician bar. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Definitely an art. <laughs> yeah, and it's the, the nightmare bar for me. So yeah. um, for, for us, so because um, people definitely they, they'll be able to pre-order it afterwards and you know like it'll it'll still be available. But to be able to to capitalize on the excitement of this Kickstarter now allows us to have a corpus of funds to make the book even better. And so if you go down, you look at our special guests, um, I mean Satine is just She's the team Phoenix. And so, you know, she has such an amazing network Just of all of, of the of people. people. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's a huge honor, honestly, for us to be able to work with these people. I mean, we have, you know, like the dude who made Eberron is, is writing for this book. It's, like, it, that's it's incredible. A real, it's a real who's who. I like going down the list. Yeah. You're like, oh, oh uh, of course. Oh, yeah. And this, oh, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. I just have always wanted to work with my friends and Keith Baker. Yeah. Like, he, and, he actually, he and I started. A celebrity charity 20 back in 2010 mm. and you know we were like every year he like fly to my house and he'd sleep on my couch and he'd be cramming you know the story that he'd give at the dungeon masters two hours before their game and <laughs> yeah and like i just you know since then he and i have always wanted to work on something together and so this was a natural thing yep. where it's like a he's like of course i'll i'll do this with you and then deborah and wall of course yeah, yeah, yeah let's do this you know yeah. and so for this is just like how many of my friends can i work with and play with yeah. and being able to like hit these stretch goals is really important the next one is mod garrett i don't yeah. know if you guys know mod but she's also uh one of my favorite aussies um she's she runs Fungeons and flagons. It's yeah. her like drunk D and D game. That's and hilarious. She is one of the funniest. She's such, such a good role player. Planet. It's a great yeah. singer and sirens. Yeah. 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 So she, you know, having uh, some folks work on uh, NPCs and having some folks work on um, side quests. It's just really cool. Yeah. And then we've got um, Fenway Jones from Jasper's Game Day. She, uh, I've been mentoring her for four years now and watching how Jasper's is blown up into yeah. this amazing mm. global event is just awesome. And of course, yeah. she's, she's like, yeah, I want to work on uh, the bar book. And you, you, know? you, you basically introduced her into the community, correct? I mean, you, you, were, you were one she... of her se seminal mentors to kind of bring her into, yeah. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> she is humble and wouldn't say it, yeah. yeah. Uh, she, she was like one of the leaders of her her game store you know mm -hmm. her game group and uh, some of the al adventures league folks really just you know fell in love with her and were just wanted to show her love and support and that's um alan patrick i believe is the one that uh introduced us and then of course i was like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's been dungeon mastering since she was 11. Yeah. you know yeah. she just turned 18 and i'm like so proud of her uh, we also have Amy Vorpal lined mm -hmm. up. We have Critical Bard lined yep. up. We have Mitch Iverson lined up. And if you don't know him, he's uh, he was one of the writers on Voltron. So he did like the D&D &D episode of Voltron. And also he's like the executive producer on Dota. Yeah, the, the Dota, Dota animation. Anime. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah it's on yeah. Netflix which right is, which now. Which is pretty cool. I, I'm a huge Dota 2 player, so it was it was fun fun to watch that. Yeah, yeah. it's not oh, for yeah. kids. They yeah. say the <laughs> F word like 12 times. It seemed a little out of place when they were dropping the F bombs. <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> not going to lie. It was just a little like, really? I don't, I couldn't watch Deadwood because yeah. of that. Oh, like, Deadwood was yeah. so good. But yeah. there's a it, lot of F words. Yeah. Super just, quick question. Who, who do you run in, in Dota? Oh, so man, so um, I, I I was 4K back. I don't know what it is now. I I, I so my favorite favorite favorite. I don't know, maybe PA. I really like you know uh, Phantom Assassin is great. I like Spectre a lot. Um, Crystal Maiden carry is really fun. You gotta nice. gotta end the game. Gotta end the game early. Um, God, who else? Um, Faceless Void is fun. Um, I wanted to get good with Ricky, but I never did. Um, is a fun fun character. What about you? I, I, I assume you're a Dota. I, I uh, so I I love my jungles, and uh, I definitely rock Shaco. Uh, oh, mostly oh, oh. mostly for no other reason than I actually role play on voice chat, um, because it's hilarious. Like. You know, playing this this mad clown. I see you. <laughs> yeah. I, 
I, I, I, I played with the dude who would do that too. And uh, he would play techies a lot. And so when, he would always do the, the, the techies characters. Um, they're like I these should, three yeah, little I should, goblins. I should, so I should be down here because this is like, all going over my head. No, no, it's, this is perfect. <laughs> I'm sorry. So Jameson and I are so similar on so many levels. I'm a League of Legends girl, and he's a Dota. I don't hate on me, though. I don't, I don't, I'm I don't, not hating I, on Dota. I'm just saying. I don't hate on me. Nice. Yeah. Back to Dungeons and Dragons. Dota, 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 used to, Dota used to be my thing back in, um, back when it was part of War, Warcraft 3. Yep. Uh, and yeah. then then when it kind of evolved, a lot of people were like, oh, you know, Dota is Dota's like this thing. And I still love it. Um, uh, you know, it's, and, uh, and then when League of Legends sort of came out and it sort of became the big thing, you know that's where kind of all my friends kind of migrated to and so i ended up migrating it but um but no i definitely love my uh my tower defense my my um three lane defender game type things they are so They're much fun, fun. Mo mobas are great so much fun. yeah it, it's really fun i i haven't i haven't really seriously played dota for probably like four or five years i was really into it like i really, really i can't really play things it. that you have to do over and over and over i love dungeons and dragons because it's mm. just always a new experience yeah yeah like we used to play um with matt and marisha and our, our nerd crew in la was uh we raid and wow and then i was oh, like i'm gonna raid with my friends and i get in there and they're like oh we failed and i was like Whoa! What happens next? Like we do it again. I'm like, no, I. We did like no quick save in D and D. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh well, I hate well, it. Yeah. World of Warcraft was a was a dark history in in the life of Michael. I um. <laughs> I, uh, I, 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 yeah, I, actually, I think I want to visit there with you. There. I, well, no, I actually got two cease and desists from Blizzard in the early days. How did um, that even happen? Yeah, All right, so, so again, we keep, since since we in this very cool audience are keeping secrets. Um, so way, 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 way back when, I actually ran very much, I, I was always good at talking to people, like that was always my thing. So a big group of us, when, uh, when World of Warcraft launched, um, what we actually did was, um, we created the Watchers of Lordaeron, and we had, we, you know, that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to go to this this place from the lore, hang out, and just chill. What we didn't realize at the time was that that was where the home base of the undead characters were. So three raid oh, groups no. would be would be there 24 hours a day. You could not make undead for like the first three days, <laughs> and and every single one of my friends threw me under the bus. So I got a cease and desist order from Blizzard saying, hello, it appears as though you are, you are you know, impacting this game in a negative way. If you do not cease and desist, your account will be suspended indefinitely. And I'm like, oh my what? God. Um, and, then, uh, and then I got really annoyed at that. And so what I did was said, okay, cool, we'll leave. And then I organized my group to constantly kill quest givers in the orc areas. <laughs> Um, and 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 then they pretty much updated the game so that you couldn't kill the quest givers, that. and that they yeah. they dropped. You remember they dropped Ooh. like level sixty elite. <laughs> that it's was him. that was that was that was me and my group <laughs> uh, because they basically said, "Dear sir, we have sent you one warning message, and this will be your final one. If you do not cease and desist so that people can enjoy our game, we will yeah I have to ban your account." We will like, change the game because of you. <laughs> oh my god! I, was, so I, I felt I felt. I felt a little guilty, but at the same time, I was very young and petty and spiteful. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, and like I said, we literally had people like twenty, like I think there was like seventy five of us, twenty four hours a day, just just doing this because we thought it was hilarious. Pretty funny though. Yeah. And it it's their really fault funny. for really funny. not yeah. thinking of that. <laughs> that's the thing like you gotta shoot it you gotta to poke the holes. the holes are sometimes yeah. you gotta do it through testing yeah right you gotta have your players <laughs> hey, poke the holes for blizzard, you. blizzard should have hired you to do that exactly to see where their issues are yeah anyway uh speaking of segues um the kickstarter is on now so uh, if you check be below me right now you can see the uh, www.thebardbook.com that should take you there uh, otherwise you can search kickstarter for sirens battle of the bards uh definitely go and pledge there are many different tiers of pledge uh, the other day, in fact, I was actually looking through it and going, hmm, which tier can I afford? Which tier? And I was like, oh, man, the $1,500 tier to create a character for the count. That would be amazing. Uh, but God, I can't, I can't, uh, um, I can't afford that. $3,000 to create a... Th and then I went, I've got a very dedicated team of, uh, of viewers and audience. I can put that as my donation goal. And so from Monday alone, I've already raised $1,600. <laughs> That's... Nice. So, you will be, so, I have, so I have already pledged $3,000. And, uh, and, oh and I will be 
<laughs> and I will be working with the people, everybody, I've got a little uh, post-it note on my wall here of all the people who have donated money to my account for it. Hells yeah. And oh all of them, that's gosh. awesome. All of, all of my fans, all of my followers, everybody who has d donated money to me to meet this goal, I will be contacting them and saying, what sort of character and quest should we create? And then that's I'll be talking. So cool. Oh, I'll be... I love that that's so, so much. Much. So I have, so cool. I have, I have, I have fundraised. Yay! I have fundraised my fundraiser for you. <laughs> that's so rad. <laughs> that's oh my so gosh. Amazing. Almost, like, almost yeah. feels like a. <laughs> it's like a mini Kickstarter. Was, yeah. yeah, it's like a mini so Kickstarter. Meta. Yeah. Mini Kickstarter. It's so perfect. It's very meta. Well, so yeah, I'm looking. I'm looking uh, forward yeah. to that with my. Uh, we will work friends. with you personally. We will we'll, we'll work with you personally to make it awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 oh, yeah. Everyone will be so yeah. They, it's gonna yes. be. It's gonna be wonderful. Yes. They will love um, it. The the uh, the funny thing is as well. Everybody was teasing me. They were saying because one of the uh, tiers that you can get if you uh, if you um, pledge a certain amount, you get credit in the book. You'll you'll be in the credits mm -hmm. section. Yeah. Uh, and and they, my my uh, my team were joking with me. My 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 crew and my fans and things. They were saying they'll put you in as just the DM from VLDL because there's sort of a there's a sort of on running on un, uh, ongoing joke that um, I was actually in the D and D annual this year uh, yeah. with the VLDL crew, but in the write up I, they've put my picture there, but in the write up they've put they've put descriptions of all of the players and they don't mention me once. Oh. So I'm in... <laughs> and so there's like this on running joke. The there's there's this on running joke that wizards keep leaving like me out of things. Here? Have you got oh, your yeah, Tasha's no, there? My, yeah, yeah, show them your Tasha's. I got sent. I got, we all got sent a, a a personalized copy of Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Aww. We were we were one of the uh, influencers that got to sort of um, announce it before it was released. Oh, cool. that's awesome! And so we all got our own thing, and all of the players have got their own name embossed on the bottom of the thing, and mine just says <gasps> uh, Dungeon Master. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and so I, there's this on running joke that like oh, Wizards man. of the Coast just refuse to acknowledge my it's existence. Funny. And yeah, like, I'm, they... I'm making a note to reference you as Dungeon <laughs> VL. I'm not just, just joking. We'll credits. put it both. Well, we now we'll have, put it, we'll have your name. <laughs> have to know, right? Yeah. 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 I, I, I'd grab the book, but it's below a huge stack of books, so I won't grab oh, it. So yeah, very, that's very much. so cool. That is that's awesome. So it is. Oh my gosh, I'm looking forward to doing yeah, that. Yeah, it's going to be really fun to make very much looking forward to it. So I want to pass over, we're, we're coming towards the end of two hours. Um, I want to pass over, I, I'm aware that I've done a lot of talking because such is my nature. Uh, Josh and Michael, uh, is there any other questions that I haven't asked that you would like to ask given the chance now? Boy, the pressure, because it was, it was <laughs> so expansive. Um, you can't open a door for me to talk. I mean, you know how this works, Rob. I'm going to drink it. No, 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 you, you go you, first. You, I'm gonna, you go. You've got a couple you, of you, minutes. You, you, I'm, I'm known as a listening GM, so I do I do a lot of listening. So you, you talk ah, and then I'll, yes. I'll figure it out. Okay, yes. okay, okay. So so I guess um, I guess I do have I do have a few questions. So um, I guess my, my big question here is, um, Guys, you are incredibly creative, the both of you, um, both uh, in the storytelling field and stuff like that, but also uh, in the art and design field as well. The stuff that is coming out with the Kickstarter, right? Um, you've got the campaign coins, which are absolutely incredible. The miniatures, uh, and if you guys have seen the render, holy crap, these miniatures yeah, are incredible. Yeah, here, here's right? our, our minis from, from the Red Opera. All right, you right? Just hold, 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 hold. I'm just going to quickly pull your screen way larger so that people can hopefully see you a little better. I don't uh, see that. Here we go. Here we go. Can you see the details? Oh, the king, the accursed king. Yeah, the accursed Is it coming? Is it coming? Ah, it's not working. Ah! On, on the top, on the Never top, mind. bro. Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to fix it up. There we go. Oh, we can focus. Enhance. 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 Zoom. Enhance. 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 All right. Um, yeah, all of this stuff is is absolutely incredible. Um, and some of the stuff is just just mind blowing. Um, I, I got I gotta ask, like, you know, as far as that that level of creativity and and stuff like that, you know, how has your experience been at being able to make the the bells and whistles, the the wormwood box, the the campaign coins, the miniatures, uh, all of this stuff, right? Because I mean, writing an adventure now that's something uh, you know I reckon I could do. You know, I've had a little bit of experience with D&D, but this extra, this the, all this stuff is just so extra, and that is everything I can say about you two. Is like, you know, what was that like? What was the experience of making this stuff? Well, we're doing it together, so that's like a dream come true. I, I've worked with so many people over the years, and finally, I, I've met someone, which is funny. I met him on his Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah we, met, we met on the live stream for the Red Opera, actually. Yeah, I was yeah. love at first sight, yeah. and I had no idea. I'd always wanted, like, 
I, I'm very much a, I'm creative and I made stuff on my own, but man, it wouldn't it be great to just have someone to do that with? And I met him and it was, I think I moved in like a month later. It was like, it was pretty <laughs> intense. Um, but I, I saw what he did with his novel, his graphic novel and with the Red Opera. And I was like, would you like to play? And he's like, do you want to play? And I was like, yeah. So every day we wake up and we just dive into work and we are just, we create, we come up with ideas. What you see are the ideas that are, are, are tangible, but you haven't seen all the other stuff that we've mm. already been planning yeah. and, and are like unfolding and preparing and negotiating. So um, it is probably the most amazing thing to have a partner that I, I'm just like, crazy in love with who just yes ands me and i yes and him and we just go back and forth with this like perpetual motion creativity machine mm, yeah it's really the coolest thing I, I, and I, I would say for me um so as, as as like ceo creative director it's literally my job to empower our artists and, and artists can also be writers and so um for me it's just it's just teamwork so our minis are made um by one of our team members whose name is Johnny. And Johnny's just, he's just amazing at that. Um, our art, David Granjo, um, uh, our city design, Carlos Ansario. And, and like these people, like I, I go into meetings with them and I, I literally, I sit down, I say, okay, it, it is my job to allow them to be as creative as physically possible and also channel and point them in the right direction. Because mm. artists will go flying. Yeah. Each way. yeah. Um, myself too, I'm, as a writer, I can, I'll start writing about something that has no forbearance on, on anything if I'm not careful. Um, and I'll like my <laughs> like, sentences just to be like, is there a period, at least a comma? Yeah, yeah comma, you're like- At least a semicolon. I, I, I get, I get a lot when I'm preparing, <laughs> preparing for my game. Okay, I've got two hours to prepare for this game. And then an hour later, right. I find that I'm like talking about the ins and outs of the history of this one tavern. And I'm like, that's yeah. not important. Stop, stop focusing on the wrong thing. Yeah, you gotta, exactly. you gotta have someone exactly. there to guide your creativity in the right direction. And just, just try to bring it all together. Um, and so for me, it's just always an honor to be able to work with these people um, and then make sure that they get paid a livable wage. Um, we all started, like when I started Apotheosis Studios, um, I was uh, an editor and a ghostwriter working full time to pay for the studio. And then David Granger, our, our lead artist and art director, uh, he was a janitor. So he was washing, uh, washing floors and washing toilets in France. Um, and he would wake up at about three in the morning uh, to get to work by four. Um, he'd work a six hour shift and then come back and then do art um, for the rest of the day. And we worked like that for about three years. Um, and so like we then like slowly started to build and add more people, add more people, add more people. So it's just like literally like there are times David and I, we just like are on our discord call and just like look at each other like, dude, like, I think we've done it. Like we did it, right? Like, have we done it yet? Like, is this, like did we do it? Did we do the thing? Um, and we just make the kind of stuff that we would want to have. Like we just make what we would want to play, make what we'd want to have as collector's items. Um, and if it can, if it's, if it's cool enough for us, we hope it's cool yeah. enough for other people. You got, you got yeah, you've cultivated an amazing group of people just, you know, from uh, your artists, with uh, Rick and yeah. even um, Taylor, the musician. Yeah, our musician. Yeah, we, like, we have a, yeah. He's, he built this beautiful studio, and it's like, not only is it awesome that we work together, but we do wake up and have meetings with people, and and it is amazing. They all look at Jameson and are like, "Thank you for totally seeing me and appreciating yeah. what I do." And I see that from everyone in our crew, and it's really awesome. You're a very good leader. I try. Okay. It's, it's, it's a lot of work. It's hard. It's hard. It's, it shows. It the if it if it feels like uh, it's ever too much, you just need to know it does show. The amount of work you put into this really is clear and uh, much appreciated among thousands mm. of people. Wow. Uh, yeah, we, 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 we want we want DMs and players just enjoy it. Like yeah, again, yeah. like we just want to give you guys tools because it that, that's it's honestly really intimidating for me. Like game masters are so creative. It's like mm. okay, how do we 
give a tool to someone who's already probably some of the most creative people alive right now, game masters, how, how can we be relevant to them and justify these people giving us money to make something for them? Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a lot of pressure, honestly, <laughs> to like be like, okay, well, this is what I, and so we have all of our game masters, what would we want? And so I, we just want to create something of value, you know, Hells and, yeah. and it, it's our hope that, that it is. And when it's not, tell us how to be better so we can continue <laughs> yeah, to, to sure. get better. Yeah, and that's community. Yeah. All right, okay. Josh. Sorry, that's a long answer. I, that, 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 that's a great question, answer. And actually, exactly. you, 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 you answered a couple of my questions that I had already, which was <laughs> uh, me and my me and my wife, we, we tried to do the same thing. We have that same sort of creative, like, momentum machine that you, uh, you were talking about. So, like, I wanted to ask for advice for there, but you already answered that with, with what you said. <laughs> so I had to quickly think of another question. Uh, the My question would if be... If you were a tree, which would you, you were be? A tree, what tree would you be? Maple. Uh, uh, maple tree. Maple. Maple. <laughs> oh, good choice. Um, I guess my question would be because like the one thing that I totally and 100% agree with you is that uh, as game developers, especially in the tabletop role playing uh, area, um, you really do need to design uh, tools that are for game masters because they're the ones that run the games and they're the ones that will adapt those tools for their players. So it's something I've always agreed with. I guess my question to you both, and it doesn't even have to be about creating and game developing is who are your biggest influencers uh, or tabletop role-playing games whether that's Keith Baker. Huh? Keith Baker Keith is Baker is one of my best friends and I've looked up to him since the moment I met him he did a thing but well, he did Eberron which is also yeah. my favorite setting um it's massive and beautiful and there's agency and it's really awesome um but he used to do this thing called have dice will travel and he had the same adventure and he traveled the entire world as like, hey, you put me up at your house, I'll fly there, I'll run a game for you and will you show me around your, your, your city, you know? And he did this 58 times the last time I checked. I'm sure he's done it more since then. He had a whole blog about it. He taught me so much, his playfulness, his preparation, um, the way he just, um, he would tell me stories how all these different groups played the game so completely differently. Uh, and he ran it, he said not one played it the same way the others <laughs> did. And that goes into how different the communities are, the, the countries, uh, the, the way people think in all these age ranges. And, um, and then of course, every time he ran a game for me, it was just like, it was, Sometimes it was dark and sometimes it was light. Sometimes it was in the middle and he was just probably the most, he is the most dynamic game master I've played with. Um, and every time he dungeon masters, it feels new and fresh. It's, I, I don't know, but he is probably my favorite dungeon master. Hells yeah. I'm going to go read that blog because that sounds amazing. Oh, check out all of his. Like he's got tons of Eberron updates and uh, he's on the uh, zone, uh, the what is it called? Manifest Zone podcast talks about um, the whole, like the planes. And it's, it's really cool. It's all See, I'm I'm gonna add Keith <laughs> Baker to uh, to my little list of uh, of people I need to GM for at some point or another, just so that, that I can, because because for me, one of my biggest things is I have. I have what I like to call my rivals list, like people who I'm like, someone important has said that this person is an amazing GM. I must GM them, and I must GM for them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And by the way, if, if you if you watch my channel or if you've watched any channel that I've been on, everyone knows exactly who that person at the top yes. of that list is. <laughs> yes, they do. I don't need to go into it anymore. <laughs> I um, I actually got to tick a couple of mine off on the GaryCon weekend. I managed to um, GM for Jamie from Level Up Dice. Um, and yeah. so that, that led to me having an affiliation with Level Up Dice now as well, which was amazing. Uh, I also, it leads me on to the next thing I wanted to talk about, which is I, uh, I got to uh, GM for Ben from Sirenscape. Um, Ben's awesome. Yeah. And, oh, I uh, love Ben. And that reminds me to mention to, and to give a shout out to Sirenscape, who have, who have collaborated with you on this Kickstarter. And the music that you guys have been listening to all night on this, um, yeah. on this, ep on this episode has been from Sirenscape, from the Salvata... Yeah. Uh, from the Salvata entries, yeah. the the the, uh, the songs and the music that he's created for that wonderful. Oh, if wonderful you've program. read it, if you read chapter one, mm -hmm. um, in the Silken Veil, mm -hmm. it describes an Orcish love, orcish song, love song, and he was like, "Can I please yeah, sing this?" Yeah, an Orcish love song. Like, yes, you can. So it's <laughs> yes, you can. Yeah, yeah Sirens get we'll, rules. We'll be, we'll, we'll be including also. Um, 
uh, uh, voice uh, voice boxes, text boxes, um, uh, voice act by both Satine Welcome and myself us, yeah. um, for some of them. And again, um, you, you don't, you don't have, have to use those if you don't want to, um, but they're they're just going to be complimentary in the sound packs as well. Awesome. So people can can get the current sound pack for free um, off the Kickstarter page, but they, there will even be more. Yeah. And yeah. Ben's Hells, yeah. Work Wonderful. Out. All right. Now, I'm aware that we've been live for two hours now. Um, if you guys have to shoot, that's fine. But if you are willing to stick around a few more minutes, I'm sure somebody, some people in the comments might have questions. I usually don't like to neglect my chat as much as I have done today. <laughs> <laughs> I've literally had my Word document of questions and talking points over the chat, so I didn't even know what people have been talking about. It could have been nobody watching for all I know. Um, <laughs> but if you are okay with uh, sticking around just for a couple more questions. Yeah, let's sure take some questions. Yeah, it's, been a, it's been an absolute yeah, blast. You guys so this has been, this has been yeah. oh, I can't even imagine. I can't even explain how wonderful this has been. Um, they say you don't meet your heroes. We have to get a game but... together at some point. Like, it has oh, to happen. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Uh, I, no, I nominate not me. <laughs> oh, I will GM happily. I will, I will. I will take the handle. It's me. I'll fight you. I'll fight you. Fight, 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 fight. Yeah, right. you, know how, you, you know how it is. Um, it's only became, actually, on, uh, on the fire escape D &D. thing. <laughs> on the Sirenscape thing, super, super fast, guys. If you have downloaded the Sirenscape demo that you get from the Kickstarter stuff, I've got to say, as, as a guy who GMs like ten to fifteen games a week. It is like one of the most useful things I have actually found, not just for games in Salvata, but other games as well. Like the music is absolutely captivating. Um, even even the little elements like an applause, for example, has been absolutely yeah. fantastic. I had like a, a group of students on their like first day of like adventuring school, uh, you oh. know, enter the stage and then they had like applause and music and stuff. Oh. It's perfect for just so many different things. So and uh, and it's free, you know, like the, the demo sample. So get it. There's no reason not to just do it. Just go there. Do it. Have Definitely it. do it. The only reason I don't uh, currently use it in my campaigns is that I started GMing without it, and I just had to become my own uh, jukebox. And so I am my own. I, I just I'm pretty good with sound effects and voices and accents, and, the, and so I just do it myself. So, but I have been in contact with Ben recently about uh, including Sirenscape music in the VLDL D and D oh, stuff in good, future. Yeah. So Hell's that's, yeah. That's potentially yeah. on the. Yeah. On this, Even if you the, just uh, use it for music too, he does yeah. a really great job of making sure that the music doesn't doesn't loop like in a weird way. Mm, so yeah. I, to GM so a lot to uh, movie movie soundtracks um, mm. you know, like Gladiator stuff like that but sometimes it just would never really match up and he's, he does a really good job of, of matching it up because yeah. I'm, I'm I'm more like you like I I didn't use Sirenscape and now having adopted using it like later on first it was like well, I don't know if I really want to mm. but then Ben was like dude just, just don't don't talk smack unless you try it's like okay fair enough, yeah fair the thing, the thing um, that he, i was really blown away yeah the thing he said that convinced me was would you watch a movie without a soundtrack right like if you right. watch a, <laughs> you watch a horror movie on mute and it's not not scary in the exactly. least exactly yeah. like it's, yeah. it's i don't know i don't know so i'd much. fight you on a quiet place just saying <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so it's really interesting. We've got our tiers, but um, Sirenscape, I believe, is an add-on. Yep. So the way Kickstarter's yeah. changed in the last couple of months, you used to have to wait to do add-ons and back get them, get them now. Now, yeah. You yeah. Just, if you want to just a la carte, you, there's a whole bunch. We actually just added D&D and a castle, and a castle. To, um, yeah. to our choices in the add-ons. So if you're like, I just want to do add-ons only, you go to the add-on tier, or you can get your book tier and then add on a whole bunch of new stuff. I still think it's so cool that you you have you got your community to pitch in. That is so awesome. Yeah, I was them for this side quest. I was literally really looking at the tiers, going, that. "Oh, I really want cool. this thing, but I can't, I'm not sure I can justify affording this. It's, I suppose yeah. it's a work expense now that I'm doing this professionally. I can." Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. and, this, and then I just kept reading just out of curiosity, and then I got to those, and I'm like, "Oh, that would be so amazing! I can't. I'm saving up for a house at the moment. I can't afford getting <laughs> totally, totally. my people. My my people. They can." They can <laughs> They can help me, and they did. That would three be days. something really cool, where like the people who help donate to that, we can do like a private like. I was like, just gonna say table. maybe maybe yeah maybe maybe we hop yeah. on your channel and then talk with them oh. and all brainstorm in the chat. Yeah, and then, yeah, go, yeah. We could do because we we do calls with these people um, who who are pledging this year. We do the exact same thing uh, with the with the Warlock book. Um, so we have like a, a side quest built. Mm -hmm. One one of the GMs is really cool. Um, again, I'm like going over time, but I just I love talking about. Really um, hey, there's they, no time limit cutting to me. <laughs> it's it goes, stand and talk to you for another two hours. <laughs> so uh, he put characters from 
um, from his table and created a side quest with NPCs that his characters knew from their home campaign and didn't tell them. So when they then got there and played through it, they they were there and then had NPCs that they knew from their home campaign as a surprise yeah. for for his table. That it was just so, cool. so meta. I was yeah. like, oh, I was so blown away. It was so cool. Um, so I know. Be, I was like, I wish it could be flies on the wall for that. You know, totally. just to see their faces, like what? Yeah, it's just such a cool <laughs> thing. So maybe um, if you know, because your entire you know chat of people pitched yeah. and do a thing and kind of brain, brainstorm. I mean, yeah. Yeah. the moment you said that, the chat exploded with, oh my god, oh, yeah. oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. So, yeah, I think I think they might be on board. We'll we'll, we'll right. flesh out details <laughs> another time. Um, so getting into questions, uh, this was actually a question for Josh. Um, Jenny asks, will Friday's game between us as we're playing the uh, first chapter? Um, will Friday's game be streamed? Oh yes, yes, oh, yeah. definitely, one hundred percent. Yeah, oh, no, and 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 since we we don't have the the colleges, uh, we, I'm gonna talk to our, our guy that helps with all the homebrew, our game designer, yes. uh, Zach, and we're Zach gonna try and make our we're gonna we're gonna take the the colleges and we're gonna try and make them uh, our version of it so that we can run it. Uh, oh, it'll we, help with it'll help copy. when it comes to the beta it'll version of beta testing copy, yours as well because we'll be yeah, able yeah. to be like, oh yeah, we got this sort of we had yeah. we were in a, uh, yeah we're in the Zach, same sort of idea. This works. This did not. Yeah. Uh, yeah, our, our homebrew guy, uh, he has a thirst for creating things. So once he hears oh, about cool. a college of geometry, he'll probably be like, yes, let's do it. So, um, um, yeah, unless we get a beta copy. But, uh, um, um, <laughs> <laughs> Monazes or Mon Monenzes uh, says, what kind of experience do you need to DM Siren's Battle of the Bard? Is it accessible for newbies and new DMs? It's a great yeah, question. Yeah, totally. So <laughs> we, we have it so that you can play it from, like, just chapter to chapter and you can just play it through and have a really fun experience doing the um the bracket system for the contest which and leads to the end or you can go in and get a little more advanced information and kind of do more pre-prep or you can get like master degree version of dungeon mastering and kind of weave this massive tail <laughs> yep. and uh work your way around that yeah. way yeah, so we kind of want to think of again tools like for uh, uh, laying out as a painter. I mean, we want to lean into the the, the the bard analogy or the artistic analogy. You can you can have you can become overwhelmed by too many tools. You can have analysis paralysis. You can become too overwhelming for a new gamer and so or a new new dungeon master or or even a player too. So we wanted to make it not not simple in a bad way, but easy to an easy point of entry so people can can kind of ease into it but then have enough complexity the deeper that you push into it where a very seasoned game master will be able to do a lot with it um with that said some of the best pieces of art i've ever seen are just done with a pencil or piece of charcoal so like a really fantastic game master can do a lot with a little but we still want to give them a lot so they have a, you know enough to, to, to build on um, but we also want to make it so it, one of the things that kind of kills me when i talk to a lot of people i was very lucky to start playing Playing teacher be using grade school. I just had a, a, a babysitter whose boyfriend was just amazing. Uh, he was really into LARPing, really into video games, and he was just like the, the older brother I never had. So I was really very lucky to have a game master very early on that kind of showed me how to do it, and then I could game master for my friends. A lot of people just didn't have that experience. They didn't have game masters. And so I, I, my personal mission, I know it is yours too. We want to train up new game masters. And I would love to do a book maybe sometime down the road of, you know, having a, a game master's guide for new game masters, particularly looking yeah. at millennial and Gen Z people um, to really try and train up a whole new generation of game masters. Um, Michael, maybe this is something that you are also doing when you are, you know, teaching uh, teaching some of your, your kids how to, how, how to play play games too. And I'm sure your, your eyes on this, but if we can get more people to to play TTRPGs, I think it's incredibly helpful. So it's healthy and healthy yeah. too. Um, for, for, oh, yeah, for, for, for absolutely. The the actual mental health benefits that um, that people get from playing role playing games, and you know, I get it. I get it quite a lot. A lot of people say, "Oh man, what you do is like so amazing to help the young kids," and you know, stuff like that. And I wish I was really that magnanimous. I I'm I'm really just a, a giant voice box. Um, <laughs> D and D sells itself. It does its own thing. You know, um, it it's just such a a a I guess a, a, a mental cleanser when it comes to like just being able to help support people that um, you know anyone could do it, and I'm I, you know I mean, I mean in the way that anyone can succeed in such a way that it just changes people's lives um, so easily, um, just because of how wonderful this game is. And um, yeah, I don't think a day goes past where I'm not incredibly grateful to have this be such a major part of my life that it is now the only thing I do. You know, so. 
um, no, definitely resonate with that. Getting more people into it is definitely the name of the game. Um, having people want to get through and, and experience stuff like this, especially uplifting and encouraging stuff. Like, I mean, I hate, I, there, there are certain breakdown terms that I hate and the idea that bards are like not good is one of them. And I love this entire campaign because it takes that idea, scratches it up and says, forget that, that's old news. Check this out, bam. We only Have like new it. news. Yeah, there you go. Creativity yeah. and stories connect us. They are how we we communicate. And it's how we learn. It's and, and D and D is and tabletop role playing games are an amazing amazing uh, uh, stage for that. Um, yeah. I've seen so much good come from from this game and other games as well. And and it's it's something that I absolutely adore uh, seeing they're, catching. It's, they're they're also a way to safely try things like try out different personas and and characters and different different identities for yourself for people who are struggling with identity crises kind of thing i've had more than one person work through uh, ptsd or through any sort of identity situations somebody came out in one of my games because she felt safe playing a, a gay character and so later on she sort of thanked me and said that that was a huge moment in a huge stepping stone in accepting for herself who she was um, and when she played this character and realized there was no judgment from all the rest of the people at the table she felt safe then telling us in real life that is the... yeah. so it's 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 a lot more than just a game and i've it's run so games great. for i've run games for kids uh, for quite a while one of my jobs was running D&D for um, kids with uh, different different needs kids usually on the autism spectrum that sort of thing and the way that it helps them it's just, you can't put it in words. I, I absolutely yeah. love that you learn so much about yourself and others when you when you partition this game and other games as well. So I, you all know how special this is and it's our responsibility to create and, and sort of cultivate this so that when we move past this onto the next generations, it's ready for them to do the same thing. So I, I take that responsibility very seriously. And I can see that in the passion that you are, you guys are bringing with mm. your products and your business and, and you're an inspiration. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, um, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. on. I have to say this in, on camera because I said this before we started and you know, it's easy to be a woman and be uplifting and raise up other people. But I wanna praise all you guys here because it takes a lot to be a, a good role, male role model for other people. And Still. like really put that light and love out in the world and yeah. be badass yeah. masculine, yeah. you know, dudes. Yeah, being supportive is still being masculine. I think a lot, yeah. of, a lot, yes. of, a lot that kind of, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Good, good, good so much love Thank you here. very much. So much love. Oh, it's because it's because it's dreaded GM's here. He's the wholesomeness hey, bar. He he's using our, he's using his, his inspiration. He's secretly inspiring us with his wholesomeness in, inspiration dice. All right, um, back to the chat. Savanti Two K asks uh, more of a publishing question. Uh, I've I've played D and D for forty seven years and DM'd for forty five of them. Since its creation and with the creators, I've run the same game world throughout every edition of d and I, I start streaming in a few months and with, uh, with that game world. Would it be worth getting this world published and how would I go about this? Wow, wow. Um, what a question. Big um, question. I would say um, from a publishing perspective, if you can, it, there'd be kind of two ways to go. If you either know a publishing group um, that you have a relationship with that would be excited to work with you to create it that's one avenue and that would be if you don't have a following another would be to build a following and then um, kind of open source it and you know kickstarter is fantastic it's democratized publishing um, i assume after all that time it is a very fully fleshed fleshed out world um, crowdfunding is an art form in and of itself um, there are I, I think that Apotheosis Studios, I think we do a good job. Um, there are people that raise, you know, half a million, a million dollars on TTRPG campaigns. So there are other people that do a really great job too. Most of those people have been out in the environment for many, many years. Uh, some of them, uh, like I, I can I can list some of the ones that I, I really like, but um, just to save time, um, they usually build a following of players over a long time. Now, maybe you, and I'm speaking to the person who asked this question, you have a large base of followers, but those followers usually have to then be galvanized and you have to add like 
many zeros on onto that to then actually be able to bring something to market. Um, and so I would I would maybe start talking to other people, other publishers, and see if they're looking for settings. Most studios though already have IP that they're working on. Like for example, we like we already we have all the IP that that we need, but I know that there are other groups looking for that. Um, but I would start streaming and start running it, and then start to build a following, and then with that following, think about mm. crowdfunding. Yeah, and then un understand how you want to put it out into the world. Yep. Do you want to do a book, a physical book? Do you want to do it on? drive through RPG. Yep. Do you want to, like, how are you putting it out into the world? Understanding how much it costs to, like, all the back end costs. You it's need incredibly to understand. expensive to make yeah. these books. Like, how much art are you going to have in? And are you going to do black and white art? Are you going to do full color yeah. art? Um, everything costs something. So, understanding how much your product is going to cost and then to print and then to ship or just put on PDF, that all has to be calculated before you even start working on it. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, a I lot- build a following. It, it's a lot quicker for people to type uh, to me, hey, when are we gonna get a VLDL campaign book than it is for me to actually make one. <laughs> and that's, yeah, one, totally. that's <laughs> one of the things that why, why they don't understand why I'm saying it's not, it's not coming, not anytime soon. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I have my own world and all yeah. of the work that goes into poking all the holes in it, like you said, oh, can't imagine it, the it, amount of work you've done. It, it requires a large team and so partnering with with a team that can do that is a great way is a great way to do it um and then having a base um yeah yeah, yeah. It, it, it it but it's that just shouldn't just always do it's, 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 yeah, all, all but like and i also don't want to say that to to, to to deter anyone from creating mm. art and to bring that art into the marketplace it's just about understanding that, like it is a long game and if yeah. you play the long game and you do it with a lot of heart, as much as you would have to have done to be, you know, gaming for that long, I mean, that's just it's wildly impressive to me. I yeah. have huge respect. Um, start streaming, start getting people excited about it. I think you can do a lot of stuff. Mm. Hell yeah. And if uh, if I can throw out a shameless plug here, uh, if you yeah. haven't done yeah. so already, definitely check out um, World Anvil because that's probably one of the best places yes. for oh, you to collaborate and collect all that information yeah. and make sure it's there so that when you are ready to eventually get to that point and proceed with it, it's all just in, in this nice, well-organized, categorized place. Um, yeah, because I've, I've had the same thing. I've had a lot of people ask me about my setting and, again, uh, resonating with Rob, um, there are not enough hours in the day, yeah. <laughs> um, but World Anvil is absolutely fantastic yeah. because anytime I come up with a great idea or anytime I, um, I think of something like an adventure or whatever, bam, straight into, into World of, Anvil. A lot of my notes yeah. are on World Anvil. Yeah. Hell yeah. I've, yeah, we're, we're converting to World Anvil now. Uh, to um, plug that yeah, plug. Yeah, I mean, you make a wiki. Like, yeah, it's a wiki it's for so great. your world. It's so great. To plug mm, that plug, we're community. actually playing with Janet on the Friday games. So yep. she's going to oh, come well play. Uh, yeah, yeah. <gasps> she's actually oh, going to be joining dang. us on the Friday game where we're playing this. They're, yeah, really, they're really fantastic. Yeah. 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 yeah, they're really fantastic. Uh, so yeah. Janet, Janet and I are like best friends. I love, I love Janet. She's <laughs> like my, she's like one of my favorite people in the whole world. The only, my, my only regret. I mean, is dude, that I'm standing live... right here. Yeah, like what? what <laughs> I'm like right, I'm like right, right here. I wish that I lived in Greece because I know people like you. Rob, we've got each other. It's fine. It's fine. Rob. Hold me, Rob. Hold me. <laughs> <laughs> Best friends. Rude, that's rude. <laughs> he meant he meant accepting present company. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, obvious. Obvious. Next, obvious. obvious. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> clearly, clearly. Um, oh, I know. I, I know. My face is just smiling. Yeah, I got so yeah, from laughing. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. From laughing. Continuing with questions, uh, wandering death is in the chat. Uh, also known as Annabelle. She is. Um, she's actually a friend of mine in real life, and she uh, provides VLDL and me with uh, um, terrain, flippable, um, flippable magnetic terrain. <gasps> she has a company called so Modular pretty. Realms. Uh, and it is tremendous. She's given us like um, specific terrain that I've asked for, but knowing like things that are coming up in the games that I'm running with VLDL, I'm like, oh, they're going to be in like an icy tundra situation. So she's... how did I not know that that you guys had it? I like I'm subscribed. I, I watched I watched every, all of your guys' videos. Every, and every video thought, that comes out, we're on episode. Really? We get we we get weekly videos and every. Is it a different? Like, is it is it, is it a, it's a different YouTube channel? It's different though. channel, yeah. But we have plugged it from the main channel a couple of times. I don't but know, every time, every week it comes it. out, somebody. He's so mad. I'm like upset about this, like, actually. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 <laughs> angry about it's amazing this. stuff, too. Oh, oh, oh. Also, Rob's actually done stuff for the main channel. And for those of you who haven't uh, seen the very, very sneaky preview of um, uh, Dark Souls Logic 2, there's a very particular person's face. I don't know what you're talking about. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, what am I talking about? You already do. I saw, I saw Dark Souls Logic one. I haven't seen. Is this our Dark Souls Logic two? There's a trailer for it. Okay, I was gonna say. So that if I missed Logic. that too, what's happening? Dark Souls <laughs> Logic is coming soon. I know, I saw the first um, one. Oh, the, this, uh, the character of Solaire. Everybody's been excited about the character of Solaire coming to Dark Souls Logic. Uh, there was a lot of discussion about who who's playing them, and I kept it very quiet that it was me. So I'm yeah. Gonna, oh man, that sounds yeah. Dark Souls Logic. Um, <laughs> I, it, on that note, actually, come different to what I was talking about. Don't worry, Annabelle. I'll get back to your question in a second. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually working with Tangent the Viva. Uh, I'm, I'm working with the Viva guys to create a series for the main channel called D and D Logic. Uh, oh, where, yeah. where I'm, currently, I'm currently writing. That's great. I'm currently writing about a, half a dozen to a dozen scripts, like two to three minute skits about like funny things taking the piss out of D&D &D kind of thing. Oh, hell oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, one of them, hell yeah. One of them is actually, uh, going back to the toilet conversation we were having earlier, about the fact that nobody really role plays going to the toilet. So there's, yeah. the script is still in development, but um, it's basically <laughs> going to be just a guy, guy sitting around a tavern and then they're like, when was the last time you took a dump? <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> <laughs> Didn't the VLD old oh, so make a video great. about that? Like, you know, like the April Fool's one where they were adding the poop mod to PUBG? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're getting... Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. My bad, my bad. I'm tired, so, uh, so Wandering Death makes the... Uh, Modular Realms is the name of the um, company, and she creates a whole bunch of flippable tiles. So it might have Tundra on one side and, like, wooden platforms on the other, and they're, and they're magnetic, so you can just stick them together on the fly. It's very fantastic. Um... She asks, what are your techniques to make sure that the necessary difficulties and challenges involved in running a business never take away the wonder and joy of being a nerd and having your hobby be your work? <laughs> because her, um, her hobby has turned into a very large work. Uh, I, I, yeah, if you thing? figure that out, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yeah, I, I am more stressed now than anything <laughs> I've ever encountered in my life. And yet happiest. So it's like, yeah. what, what do you do? Um, uh, well, we, we used to meditate. Yeah, yeah. And um, we used to go on walks. Walks, yeah. During kick, so there's like there's Kickstarter life and not Kickstarter life. Yeah. Um, during kick during a Kickstarter, you you're, no you're just not. It's only Kickstarter. Not, yeah, you're just it's just only Kickstarter. Um, Kickstarter and then our our, our, our child. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's so, yeah. so that, that having I another do, life do, form to necessarily, necessarily look after my, kinda helps, for I guess. My, for my daughter and now your stepdaughter. Yeah. So when yeah. she's here I do I, I I am daddy, so I do turn that all off and I, I play board games with her and kind of just do whatever she wants to do. Very um, adorable picture from Mother's Day recently. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, yeah, that made yeah, me just like... I was did you see all the like the things I didn't post that hair. Oh, you didn't post After that. the picture, she she decided she wanted to do my hair since I usually do her hair. Yeah, it's And so bad. it was a hot... She's and she did this. She did this. She yeah. did this whole this 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 pink looking thing. She's very good. She's very talented. Um, it, it's a really it's a really fantastic question though. So it's basically, if I'm understanding the question correctly, how do you have a, a good work work creativity balance? So not work life balance. That's another yeah. good question. But a yeah. good work creativity balance. Um, it's really hard. Um, that's, yeah. It's a really hard one. And so. Oh yeah. well, we we do have a log logistics person. Uh, a, a logistics manager um, in our company and that helps so we're not always doing those like the business we are always doing the business but that that's an even other like mind -numbing. right but so for someone for someone who's in a startup so like you're very fortunate to be able to come in we have a team of like six to seven eight full-time employees now yeah. that was that's not always been the case yeah. my, my my dear um it, it, it's it's really really hard um, and so early on, many years ago, when I was doing everything and then was able to start to hire other people on, um, you have to basically understand that you are going to be in, you have to basically be able to sacrifice everything to say, this is the goal that I want to have. And you have yeah. to have things that you're not going to sacrifice. So like, I wasn't going to sacrifice time with my child. Like, you know, I brought life into this world and I need to care for that life and um, have her have a better childhood than I had. But um, to s still maintain that creativity, you almost kind of have to be a little crazy, I think, to be able to compartmentalize. Now, the issue is as you scale a company, and I'm sure that people like Dirt League guys can speak to this to great, great lengths, as you start to scale an organization, 
if you are one of the prime creators in that organization, you have to be really careful that your time then doesn't go into doing things that other people can do that you can outsource. And I don't mean that in a bad way, because there are probably other people that are better at that than you. Um, from a legit, if, if you are a creative type, kind of then probably there's going to be a more logistically minded person that can do logistics better than you. Mm. And so I was able to then find people who are more organized than me. And I'll, I'm incredibly organized for story design and for creating worlds. Um, but like I use a post-it note system and like, like it's, it's, it's highly ineffective. <laughs> um, and, and we have other people that have much more dialed in forms of being able to do those tasks. And so to be able to really be very cutthroat about <clears throat> allowing other people to help you and then to be the creative mover. Um, and if you can find people that, that, that do that and you can incentivize them, usually it's through money by paying them so they can eat food is usually helpful. Um, then you are able to continue creating your art. But if you are an artist, you won't have, it's not like making art isn't an option. You don't, you, you are an artist and you have to create. And if that is the case for you, my condolences, welcome to the, welcome to the club. Um, <laughs> and if you want to do it full time, you have to then find, find that balance. And it yeah. is, it's painful, at least in my experience. Yeah. yeah. Um, with my last company, we'd been doing it ourselves. We did it ourselves for like two and a half years before everything like uh, separated. And it, it just, it's there's no option when you when that is your passion like yeah. that is what you do and you do all of it until you work you know your company's been around for what how many years man since we first made it a sole proprietorship i was in college um so it's been around for oh, about 15 years probably plus um, yeah. but then you know now we're an llc and you know there's you know We've gone through iterations and 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 you know gone through different team members and things like that. Yeah. Um, but you just it it if people want to do make art full time, um, uh, Jordan Peterson talks a lot about this. He does a, a great job kind of outlining. It is really hard to be a full time artist, um, and then to be a full time artist that lives uh, you know lives relatively well. We're not like super wealthy or anything. It's really challenging. Um, and so you have to, that has to be the value. You have to kind of raise your hand and say, I want to create art full time. And I'm willing to make a lot of sacrifices in order to do that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, you know, when the last, I don't know, since 2012, I think when I started doing my graphic novel, there was this thing where I, I just was taking all these little jobs. And then I was like, no, I'm going to buy in. And yeah. I, sacrifice my friends i was like mm. this is what i'm going to do i'm going to be a master at this this is all i can think about and so i i would go out all the time and then at that point it was just me and my projects yep. and then every like five six months i would come out for like a week and then i would go back in for another six months and that is just like how things it's, how it works sacri it's, sacrificing it's, friends is how i got my powers as well but it was yeah. very very messy <laughs> messy clear up and you know it took a long time yeah, I, to get I the blood used, out i used to be the, yeah i used to be the alive dead other gamer then yeah. i <laughs> I'm uh, I'm on the start, I'm at the start of that journey right now. So the things that you're saying are hitting true, and it's yeah. we're at that stage where like a, a lot of my close friends haven't seen me in like a long time, and, and I have tried to make the effort to see them and stuff like that. But that yeah, passion, yeah. But the ones is that love scary, you, right? and yeah, they're like they you know say, what, I'm I'm team you. Yeah. Then yeah. they will stay, and so when you do see them every six months to a year, they're yeah. they're like they're with yeah. you. But also, you know, if you're doing streaming, then you're like. You almost only can like be like tight friends with the with people, the people who that are you're going working to work with. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, so like here, here are your friends here. Yeah, 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 yeah a, exactly right. There's, and, a, and, there's and, a, a YouTuber I love, CGP Grey, who talks about it. Um, who talks about it's almost like there's lots of light bulbs attached to the same power box, and there's only so much power. So if you need this bulb, this this relationship bulb to be brighter, you need to turn down the work for a bit. And if mm. you need this work to be brighter, you're gonna have to turn down friendships or whatever. And there's like yeah. one, something's got to give. But eventually, you got to go. Oh crap! If I don't turn this bulb back on for a bit, it, I'm gonna lose it. So you got to turn the yeah, workship yeah. back down and turn the friendship back up again. And yeah. like touch base mm. and be like, hey, I know we haven't caught up in two two months because I've been busy with work. Uh, but it's been super important. Now it's gotten to a point where it can kind of look after itself. So now I can hang out with you again. Now. Yeah, that's such yeah. a great analogy. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it, yeah. it's actually it actually so perfect. Um, so I, I I basically completely understand. Like, um, it's very weird. I I exist in a very strange space because I've always got my hand on that ceiling of success. I know where it is, and I know if I push it too hard, I know that I'll, I'll you know I know that I'll do really well. 
Um, but I don't because of how much stuff I, I invest into my work with the kids. And if I, in order to do that, I have to sacrifice that. And I never want to do that. Yeah. Like sacrifice that work for me. Yeah, that for me. Yeah, don't sacrifice it. <laughs> not, not, not until I joined the Emerald Cabal. Bringing it back around. But, um, yeah. but, but I think one of the most important things is exactly what Rob's saying. And that is when you start to do work that is, of course, your passion and your, your hobby and your art, um, there is such a fine line. You need to be able to manage yourself and say, here is where I need to draw that stop sign. Because so many artists that I know um, just burn out because they just continue like day in, day out, night and day. They, 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 I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I don't no. know what, no, I don't know what Why you're talking about. Why is everyone about. looking at me? So, so what I do, <laughs> I what so, one of the things, so one of the things that makes me uh, the networking goblin, as it were, is, <laughs> the, is the, the fact the, that the I will reach curie. out to these people, I will reach out to these people, Dread, and I will yeah. say, hey, Here's something that we're going to do that's not going to be broadcast. We're not going to have an audience. We're just going to yeah. have fun because it's the things we do and the things that make us feel better. Hell yeah. But everything is content. Everything is content. <laughs> Wait, stop it. Do you, know how, do you know how many times I have to stipulate, hey, do you want to play a game? No, we're not streaming. That's ridiculous. Anyway, yeah. my point but, is... But people... I, <laughs> My point is, us. <laughs> is that is, is that there there is uh, the time in which you you work with your art and there is a time when you play with your art and it's important to be able to do yeah. both yeah. happily yeah. and healthily uh, in a space Preach. that you know nurture you as an artist you know all right um, everybody yeah. shut up um, I couldn't agree are... with you more Michael <laughs> well, I, it, yeah. it's well, well so over... hard to find that balance yeah, yeah. 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 we're well over time so uh, and I'm not even I'm not even sorry about it. So one word, one 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 sentence answers. Uh, quick fire round. Phoenix Iwaki asks everyone's favorite ba college of bard. For me, it was College of Whispers. Sounds like it might be College of uh, Geometry soon. Uh, oh Josh. yes, Josh, favorite bard. Uh, favorite college. bard, Glamour. Uh, Glamour. I just I love how they orchestrate the the field. Nice, yeah. uh, Michael. I I would have to say the College of Eloquence for Eloquence. no apparent reason. <laughs> nice, uh, Satine. <laughs> Uh, I'm Whispers. Vlani is College of Whispers. Nice, nice, nice. She's a spy master. Jameson. I I like our the the one that we have in, unveiled here tonight. <gasps> yes, Requiem. Of, of Requiem. I won't change my answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> locked in. <laughs> locked in. <laughs> I've already put it on your tombstone. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, I'm just uh, searching for other questions now. Um, people are just chatting a lot. I do a I do a stream every week called Charisma Check, which is just my just chatting stream <laughs> where I just chat with the and I read everything. And because there's it's grown over time, it's gotten to a point where I usually end up like two hours behind the chat because I'm reading and responding to everything, and they're just <laughs> so that my the, my audience the, is used to it. Yeah, the audience actually does it on purpose too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah. we win all the time. So we do. <laughs> uh, more questions, more questions. I think we might be getting to the end of it then. Um, I think we might be. Uh, we want to introduce you to our PG who's come oh, out. This is our PG. PG. She says, "Why have you not fed me? <laughs> Where is my food?" <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, in that case, I think it is. I think it's time that I let you guys go off and feed your cat. So uh, I have a couple, yeah. of, couple of ways that I'd like to uh, to go out. Firstly, <clears throat> oh, we have oh, another kitty. kitty. Another kitty cat. <laughs> I don't, I, have a, I don't have one. I don't have a kitty cat, so here's my I, blue, here's my blue dragon. Oh, I love That's that one. Yeah. Here's right. my very smaller, tiny blue dragon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, question question to both of you. Uh, I came up with these sets of questions myself, just as an outro, uh, completely out of my own creativity. The same way I come up with all of my DMing style and everything. <laughs> um, okay. Pre-game house rule. <laughs> What's if it? you drop your dice, you get disadvantage. If I drop my dice, I also get disadvantage. Nice, yeah, Jameson. Great one. Do you do you have, do you GM? Do you DM? You got. I I, I I I do. I think for for me, the the most important one is if if people can't if 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 we don't leave the table feeling better than when we started, we've done something wrong. I used to be a camp counselor. And so I, I have this, this, this in crowd mentality, whenever I DM of if people need to feel safe and if they don't, I, I actually just stopped everything. And then we, we kind of like turn off and then, and then work out issues. I've, I've seen kind of your example of, of this uh, the woman coming out. I see people processing through a lot of stuff and I have, I have a psych degree. And so I'm, I'm, armed with enough information to kind of make myself dangerous in this regard yeah. where I, 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 I will, people know that I will, I will hit pause and then I will step in 
and and actually start to, to work things out. And then sometimes people cry in good ways. There's catharsis and that's great. And so people know that when they when 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 they have agreed to be in my table, that we will massage certain things and we'll use it almost as kind of a, a, a little bit of a meta group therapy. And I'll 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 kind of poke people in a nice way to try and under yeah. uncover what's what's coming out for them. It's longer than one one sentence answer, but um, yeah. <laughs> it was a, it was a beautiful answer. Uh, I want the same answer from Dead Aussie Gamer. What's what's your pre-game house rule look like? Uh, pre-game house rule. Ooh, jeez. Um, one of my big ones is rolling dice. Um, if I don't ask for a roll, don't make one. Um, because yeah. uh, quite yeah. frankly, I'm one of those guys who just outrightly will let you win if you do something clever or yeah. if you are yeah. quite good at role playing and stuff. Yeah. Um, and uh, most importantly, uh, if you use, um, uh, what is it called, uh, vicious mockery and you insult me, uh, I will just not make a will save, you win. Just, yeah, just if you yeah. can come up with something witty and funny, like, yep, that's it, he doesn't save, bam, you hit him. Nice. So I do, I do lots of stuff like that, so I, I always encourage my players, like, uh, don't ask me for checks, don't roll dice um, when, I, when I don't tell you to, because I'd much rather you just tell me the story. And if your story is cool, I'll just keep it going. Uh, the dice are there to supplement my adventure, not It's so hard for me to hear this. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I like. I feel so good hearing that. Yeah. Josh. Well, you know what? You know, one day, one day, I will, I, I will jam for you too. I was, I'll just guarantee <laughs> I you that. That'll, that'll happen. I will, I will show you, I will I will show you the stuff. This hand. Josh, pregame house rule. Uh, pre-game house rule, we are a no rush table and we're very descriptive. We have a, uh, a, a our whole table is all about in, enabling and uh, and, and, and uh, pushing people up. So uh, never do you will have someone there like tapping the watch. Uh, if you want to play something out, you have the space to play it. Uh, obviously, we obviously uh, have favorite moments as well. I spoke about this before the game and yeah. people that have seen us before. We're, we're very much a table that wants you to come back Leaving, just like uh, Jameson said there, uh, leaving feeling great, but also coming back excited to do more. Uh, that's very something that we cultivate at our tables. So um, I, think, um, I think that's it. Yeah. And mine, uh, mine is that I always send new players with me two different documents. Um, one of them is a survey that is like a zero to ten scale. How much do you are you interest? How much are you motivated by mystery, political drama, uh, acquiring wealth? What sort of story do you want to tell? Do you want it to be seri uh, serious or slapstick kind of thing? gives me a good idea of how to pitch it and then the other one is a consenting gaming form i always sent out to my players are there any trigger any any things that you'd rather be off the table and that's that again is a sliding scale i'm okay with it happening to somebody else at the table i'm okay with it being involved in any capacity at all i'm okay with it being involved as long as it's kind of alluded to off screen and we don't have to deal with it it's like sex being faded to black kind of thing mm. Or I just, I don't want to even think about harm to children in the game in any way kind of thing. So like I always send through a whole bunch of stuff like that. That's my pre-game stuff. Uh, favorite favorite GM moment? Satine. Today. The look <laughs> on my husband's face and I let him level oh, the five. Oh, you level five, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. It, was, it was adorable. I was, it was adorable. Watching. I was watching. It was I, adorable. So I was like, is this, is this a trick? Is this a trick? <laughs> How hey, long have you been level cool. four? Yeah, it's Eight far months. too I'm long. Three months. <laughs> it's far too long. Oh boy. <laughs> she's gonna she's she's gonna introduce like some of the older AD and D rules where they, yeah. you come across an undead and it levels. can sap levels from you. <laughs> You'll go back you know, to level four. Part, but you know, I, I... Okay. go on. I was gonna say Satine did say that she does um she does like um what's it called checkpoint uh, leveling. Milestone. Uh, you know milestone yeah. leveling. So, I mean, it just makes me think, like, okay, well, what, what was he doing this whole time? Meditating for 16 years. <laughs> Not much, apparently. Yeah. Three months later, what are you doing? I'm still meditating. Calm down, okay? Don't rush me. <laughs> <laughs> They're one-hour games, yeah. so yeah. you imagine each month yeah. is an actual, like, yeah. game. Yeah. The best part is, is, is <laughs> I run this character in other games and other streams, and, like, like I play him at level 10, play level 7, <laughs> play level 8. He's in the book is like like a demon slayer of like just like like amazing like yeah. epic proportions. He's in he's in our other book as a demon slayer. And like here's like level four. He's now, <laughs> now level five. He's got extra Amazing. attack. His proficiency's gone up. He's unstoppable. Uh, All right, uh, uh, favorite GM moment from you, Jameson. Um, I, I really enjoy playing this team. It's it, 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 it's it's really a lot of fun. Um, I met a game more with you, and I'm more like I joke around more with you than I ever have in any game ever. Okay. I'm usually a super serious role player. It doesn't have to be like serious in a bad way. I'm like very invested as a role player, almost to the point of like dissociation, where I like am that character is like method acting. Um, but with you, 
I'm in that character as your partner and we're just kind of having fun. And that's actually, it's really fun. I've never felt that comfortable with anybody before. So it's really, it's really lovely. It's, oh. yeah. it's awesome. I, uh, it, today's was the first couples D&D that I, I watched and I was like, wow, this is really cool. I, I, I'm definitely yeah. going to tune in in the future. Uh, Michael, what's your favorite GM moment? Uh, favorite GM moment. Um, dude, I got to give a huge shout out to a uh, guy from how to be a great GM. I, um, being one of his regular players has been just a true privilege and getting to know him as well as I have. Um, I have never felt in more danger. Sorry, I, can't, like, I can't hear you over uh, the, over the sound of names dropping. Sorry. Oh yeah, 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 there he goes. <laughs> oh look, it's just, it's just, I shake him and they all fall out. <laughs> uh, anyway, the, um, the, the big thing, uh, the big thing was that was every time I've played with guys so far, no matter what character I play, no matter what game I play, no matter where I'm playing game one, and you can watch these will always be guy trying to murder me. <laughs> right game one a uh, game one of the first game i was on a on a, on a st uh, on a big ship and a training facility and a cannon was aimed not at the ship at me you may it want was, to change but... the color of your shirt though That's yeah, yeah you're red, you're like, well you know what ironically this was the change to make fun of guy because he used to wear yellow and then i started saying you know what screw it i'll just embrace it and just keep wearing lean the red in, just lean <laughs> in. And, then, and we played ghost of salt marsh and i'm not joking we were sailing on a ship I was like looking around, it's like, are we in danger? No, it's perfectly fine. Okay, you're in the bilge, you know, there's rats and stuff. Cool. A dwarven vessel falls from the sky and crossbones directly where, where you're standing. What do you do? What do you want me to do? You know? <laughs> I die, I guess. But, but yeah, I it, die. <laughs> but for me, those dramatic moments kind of threw me so hard and so fast into each and every one of those games. Um, I didn't have time. I didn't need to be warmed up into a scene. It was just, nope, I'm there, and here I am. And he's the only GM who has ever been able to do that with me, who has been able to just sort of go, cool, you're on, now you're off. And then it's just, you're in an entirely different world. And I didn't even realize nice. it happened. Uh, nice, very good. And Josh, favorite GM I, moment? I have so many. Um, Pick one. We play, we are, no, we play in a consistent world. So we have a lot of things that players unlock and interact with and happen. But I think that the one favorite GM moment I'm gonna take is we did a charity stream last year for Starlight, the sick children who, um, you know, especially in this, these dark times, needed as much help as they could get. So we did a 24 hour stream running D&D &D straight. And uh, we had Rob playing here for the first time. And by the end of that stream, it was super emotional. We were all crying um, from <laughs> fatigue, most probably. Yeah, so um, but yeah, and and it was it was just an absolute blast because we ended up gathering uh, $9,000 uh, $9, uh, all up for the kids. And that's a big, that's awesome. if, if there's nothing else that I can, like, if I don't go any further than that, um, which I'm hoping to go further than that, but if I don't get any further than that, I know that I've put that good into the world. Like that, that, that moment made me so proud of that. And everyone here, uh, that was there in chat and, and Rob, who I think that was our first game that we got to play together. Right. Was uh, second, the... I think the first one was the 12 hour campaign. And then, no, no, I think it was a 24 hour all up. So I'm talking about the 24 hour that was all up, but you were only there for 12. Oh, and I was there for the 12. Yeah, yeah. for 12. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was a Cheater. two part one shot. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> no, no but he, re he, he came back and he did the, the full 24 one of, hours. So one of the reasons, yeah. one of the reasons that we made so much at the end was that in like the last hour to go yeah. of the, the stream, yeah. Dread, we'd, we'd raised X amount of money and we yeah. needed like Y amount. And it was like another 50% of what we'd already raised with only yeah. an hour left on the 24 hour stream. And Dread was like, Tell you what, I'm just going to put it out there before checking with my wife. If we make Y amount of money, we'll do a 24-hour stream with Rob and this and that and the other. And, and then yep. everybody was like, all right, boom, here's some money. <laughs> and then we it were like, amazing. Oh, oh, it happened. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. Man. Okay. Yeah, yeah it was. was fun, yeah, I'm just, I'm really proud of that because we've, we've done well and it shows how much people love this and love what it does for the world. So It was wonderful. Yeah. Um, my uh, my favorite GM moment was a home game. Uh, my party's fighting uh, fire giants for reasons, um, and it's uh, one of one of the fire giants has gone down, but they're fighting a dreadnought who's still on like seventy hit points. Th three of the four parties are like yo-yoing; they're going down to zero, back up to like ten hit points, back down again. The monk, who's a level nine, uh, level nine, level ten monk at this stage, and has four hit points left, turns to the dreadnought's massive fire shields and goes. As a level nine monk, I can run up solid surfaces. I can run up vertical walls. And I was like, yes. And she goes, can I run up his shield and then stab him in the face? And I was like, it's a fire shield, so you'll take fire damage. And she goes, how much? I said a D6. And she goes, I'll do it. And, she... <laughs> and I rolled 
three hit points of damage. She's got one hit point left as she gets to the top. I'm rolling a bunch of saves to see if this guy can shake her off, oh. and she just stabs him in. She did like 40 points of damage with all of her monk abilities until eventually yeah. this, this fire giant just yields because he, he's, he's got two st- shields strapped to him. He can't get, can't, can't get her off, so he has to go, okay, 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 you win. It was amazing. It's <laughs> the the power most badass thing that's ever happened yeah. in a game. It's awesome. Okay, um, right. All right, quick tip for the audience, Satine. Quick tip. Quick tip. Uh, shut your mouth and listen to your players. Yes! I'm a listening GM. I'm all about that. Sorry. Yeah. Always, always bounces it back. Yeah. Uh, Jameson. Man, I, I, I would say build a, as much as you can be in the world that you're creating. So I, again, I had a troubled childhood, so I lived in fantasy more than reality. And so I think I just had a lot of early training in this, but as much as you can have your world be so fleshed out, see it. And so anticipate all of the questions that your players will act, ask before they ask them. They'll ask questions that you can't think mm-hmm. of, but you'll have covered so much ground that you'll then have an entire framework for where they can go. And then you, you'll never be kind of left flat footed. You'll always be on your toes and be able to react to them. So make make your fantasy world or make your game gaming world as real, if not more real than your your yeah. real world. And if you can do that, go and have therapy because it means that you probably had suffered some sort of trauma. In your we, past. We, didn't, we didn't even get, we've been sp- speaking for so long and it's absolutely flown by. We didn't even get around to talking about uh, the, the governments of the different r- districts of your <sighs> city or anything. I'm very much looking forward to seeing that when the, when the actual campaign comes out. Um, but Each it was, has its own government system. Yeah. We'll talk about that when we uh, yeah. go over yeah, we, yours. We hop yes. Yeah. Wonderful. Oh, yeah. But yeah, it was, it was part, it's another reason that I fell in love with the Kickstarter mm-hmm. immediately is that, is that it just, you can tell that it's from people who have fleshed out the world so it is a real world everything about it exists and it's clear when you're talking about even that you th- you thought about the sanitation of this city and all that stuff that that's the sort of game i love to play in when the when you can ask the gm anything and they have an answer because they've thought about it already like what the world is or if they're really good at improvising to the point where they're just coming up with it on the spot but it looks like they've thought about it ahead of time and it's um, both they can only do that if they've done the other pre- yes you know, pre- yeah. Work. yeah yeah exactly all right uh michael uh get tip for the audience Oh, um, always be proud of yourself. Always tell yourself that today's game will be better than your last one, and your next game will be better than the one you're running right now. Nice. Josh, tip for the audience. Uh, listen, communicate, and grow. Uh, so they're, they're the most important things that I think that this game and the, the, the community needs, because if you're listening and you're communicating, you can continue to grow and make better games. If it gets to a point where you need to walk away from a table and there is that does happen. That's a definite scenario. Make sure that you're helping people grow if they step away. So when they go play other games, they're growing in there as well. And we can just continue to make this game more awesome. Nice. Uh, my tip to the audience is uh, subscribe to Robert Hartley Twitch. Uh, <laughs> 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 Gotta always be promoting. Uh, my, my tip to the audience is that the vast majority of questions that start with how do I deal with X player or how do I deal with X circumstance always comes down to talk to them. Yep. Talk, communicate. talk to them, communicate. Yeah. It's, it's I, the, the, the ones that get me as well is whether I'm not intended just a little bit when they're like, how can I trick my players into doing this? No, just yeah. talk to them, That's have it. a conversation. You got this. Yeah. I really yeah. want them to go in X direction, but then they're refusing to, well, talk to them. Maybe they don't know that you want them to go into X direction or maybe <laughs> but, you don't but, realize that they yeah. really don't like yeah, that sort 100%. of a game. But what, Rob, what if the question is, is like, my wire's been shut because I'm in a car accident. How do I role play? Talk to your players. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that'll work. That, that could... <laughs> I'm fine. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm fine. Just talk to your players. Find a different, there's different ways language. of communicating. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, become a, I mean, become a dexterity-based bard, then you don't need vo- <laughs> vocal. Uh... There it is, there it is. <laughs> nice one, Rob. Thank you. Yeah, that's good, that's good. <laughs> All right. And finally, as the five of you finish your drinks at the table in this uh, in this bar, this tavern, uh, and you decide, yeah, you know what, Salvador does sound like a good city. We should go and play there. As you're getting up from the table, Satine, could you GM us out of here, please? Yes. Awesome. I uh, I say, where are you going? And I I grab a small rock out of my pocket and I throw it on the ground and it shatters this giant portal um, opens up and through it uh, you can see Salvata 
Oh. And I say, I mean, you wanted to walk. We could just, we could just go like right now. That would be quicker. She's go. right. Let yeah. me grab my, yeah. let me grab my instrument. Oh, don't you have to run the bard? At the bar? Nah, I have a guy. You take care of that. We're going to, let's go. And then I, I grab Vajra and I just shove him through the portal. <laughs> Level five. Level five. <laughs> uh, I walk. I walk up to the I'm edge. Coming, of... honey. <laughs> I walk over to the edge of the portal and as I do, I, I grab my hat. I dust it off. I put it on the top of my uh, my very crooked looking skull and I say, Well, you know what I always say. Game hard or die trying! Woo! And with uh, I'm that, gonna, I'm gonna I will say, take us over to the Let us begin page. and walk through the portal. Yeah, let us begin. Yeah, let us begin. And I will <laughs> fade out. Thank you very much for everybody to uh, for joining us. Don't forget to take, check out the uh, thebardbook.com. Check out the Kickstarter. Sirens, Battle of the Bards. Make sure you pledge to it before it's over in 10 days' time. And game hard. Bye!